Hey everyone, welcome to the speed tour from a gorgeous day in Lime Rock. It's round four of the Trans Am series presented by Pirelli and we have the best fans in all of Trans Am here today. <laughs> I told you, and we of course have got Ben Sissel. Uh, ben, um, this is somewhat of a homecoming for both these fans and of course for CD Racing. This is where Chris Dyson and his team, uh, certainly Chris Dyson grew up, Rob Dyson, his dad, and so they come on the back of a homecoming which sees them almost unbeatable so far this season. Yeah, Dyson has been undefeated here at Lime Rock Park at the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, favorite. They're celebrating their 40-year anniversary. Rob Dyson's back here somewhere trying to be incognito. Chris Dyson right here, but he's starting second. So with Matthew Brabham, his teammate, but there aren't any team orders, as we know, as we've seen. So we're going to see who takes the green flag and who gets around. What do you guys think? You think Dyson's going to stay undefeated? Yeah! It is his home crowd. Now, the, what he's got to watch forward to, or what he's got to look forward to, is the fact that... Um, there's been some problems in qualifying, and certainly in the terms of um, the Trackhouse car. I had I, what you can tell me what the definition was, but uh, Justin was really quick, but then didn't manage to get out and qualifying in time. Yeah, I believe in practice he set the fastest times, but then Ken Twaits was telling us that he broke a rotor and only got, I think, one lap, but it wasn't his heated lap or anything like that. So he's starting. Uh, in the back, but we saw him start in the front at NOLA and move his way to the back after going into the grass. So maybe it's a maybe a team strategy. Start him in the back and work him up front. We'll see because uh, do not ever count Justin Marks out. Yeah, the other one you've got to look for is obviously Tommy Dreesey in the number eight uh, just behind us at the moment. We were talking to him a moment ago. Big race for him for a lot of reasons. He's 26 points adrift at the moment. And if you remember this time last year, he slipped on some oil in qualifying and wrote the car off. So he didn't get to race here and it kind of put him on the back foot for the rest of the season. Yeah, he was always kind of limping through the rest of the championship. So every start, every green flag and checker flag is so important, especially when the points are so tight here. But then with our best crowd in Trans Am yeah. here in Lime Rock, everybody wants to win here. So even though he's the uh, rockin' Moroccan from uh, L.A. area, I think he, if he wins here, he might call Lime Rock his home track. It's going to be an interesting race. The conditions are absolutely set fair. It doesn't get any better than this. A beautiful day here at Lime Rock. We're celebrating Paul Newman. We're celebrating all the greats that have been here. But we're also celebrating the best crowd in Trans Am. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with all the action. Woo! Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race watching snacks with Mission's mouth watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. Speed, endurance, desire. For 160 years, Motul has helped engines and drivers go faster, further, and stronger. Tested in the heat of battle, driven with passion. With one aim, to give you superior powertrain protection and performance. Motul. You've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together, Together we can move anything.
Well, welcome here, the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic here at Lime Rock Park. I see you're trying to get in the shot. Just get in the shot, dude. You got a shot of him? Are you having fun here? Yeah. What's your name? Lincoln. Lincoln. That's actually my son's name. I love it. Well, thanks for coming out. So check this out. Here we are, Matthew Brabham, our MoTool Pole Award winner. He's signing autographs because we have so many fantastic fans here at Lime Rock Park. But I'm going to come and interrupt real quick and talk to Matthew. So, Matthew, I know that you picked this side, the inside corner. Green flag drops on such a short course. What's your strategy to keep the rest of the field behind you? I don't know. Yeah, we got to figure that out. I mean, it's hard to make plans for the start of the race, but uh, I think these we got the front row lockout, so that's kind of the plan is to is to keep the one two going to turn one. But uh, I got the inside, and it's hard to make a move on the outside here in the one because it's such a long corner. So whoever's on the outside kind of gets pushed out. So we'll see. I'm obviously I got to be nice to Chris a little bit, but uh, no, it's going to be a great race. Obviously, the history Dyson front row. That's the plan for the race as well. I love it. Well, Matthew Brabham up here in the front, our MoTool Pole Award winner. We're going to come over here hoping that Chris Dyson is at his car because Chris Dyson, like we said, celebrating 40 years of Chris Dyson Racing. A lot of the staff at Chris Dyson Racing and Dyson Racing were there with Rob back in the day 40 years ago. He's starting out here. Is your driver here, Stevie? Not yet. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put Stevie on the spot. Stevie Dix, your one job, get your driver to the fan walks. What's the deal? I know, you know, he likes to be fashionably late. It's part of his style. <laughs> so this... you know that people are just waiting on their tiptoes for him to come. <laughs> I know, but look at this crowd, man. He's got a lot of fans here. His home track. So look for this car to move up front undefeated here in the TA Series at the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic here at Lime Rock Park. We're going to make our way through because we got to talk about this driver right here, David Pinteric. And look at all these. I love being able to just kind of come through the crowd like that. That means we've got a great crowd. David Pinteric here with Kreider Racing. Where's your driver? But check out the uh, uniforms over here. I got I to gotta get this. Because you got like Captain America here. But so you guys did it a little bit differently. I spoke to David last night. Oh, man, yeah, he's coming running because he's like, don't talk to my crew. So. I talked to you at dinner last night, and uh, you wanted to spend Memorial Day with the family, but then your wife's like, but you got to go racing, and because you've got the Memorial Day car. Yeah, I, uh, her uh, mom passed away last month. I didn't want to abandon her for the whole weekend, and it's uh, so I said, you know, we'll come in and start uh, qualify without any practice. We did pretty good, and uh, I was pretty happy. You guys put a good car together and all that stuff, but I, you had to be here this weekend. This weekend for racing is uh, a holy weekend. You know, you got Monaco, Indy. Charlotte and Trans Am at Landmark Park. It's an honor to be a part of this. Nice. And then without any practice, here you are, P4. Yeah. Nice job. It's all car. Way to fly the red, white, and blue. So thank you so much for being a part of this. How cool is that? I just saw Danny Lowry coming through. So Danny Lowry, I'm going to put you on the spot here because here you are in XGT, but you've got some TA monsters beside you, behind you. You're kind of in a sandwich. So when the green flag drops, what's your strategy? I think my strategy is just to stay out of the way, <laughs> let these guys go at it. And uh, I know they've got a heck of a race coming up, so uh, I don't want to get in the middle of it. Now, being a, in the, one of the GT classes and being the, the short track that Lime Rock is, uh, you're, you're probably in your mirrors just as much as you are the windshield. A uh, good bit. The mirror is really important here, but, uh, you know, if you, if you keep, that, uh, keep that right foot planted, you can roll around here pretty quick. Nice. I love it. Well, Danny Lowry, Bennett Bridge Hall, AMG Mercedes. The Amy Army is alive and well here. Amy Ruman, two-time Trans Am champion here in the red Corvette. We know that she's always a favorite here at Lime Rock Park. But Justin Marks here with Trackhouse, and, and your team is racing today also. But, Justin, you know I love the awkward questions. This is a lot further back than I was planning to see Justin Marks. What happened? I, don't, I didn't know if you'd take the time to walk all the way down here and see me before the race started. <laughs> no, I mean, we've just been fighting some mechanical gremlins a little bit. It's a brand-new car. I mean, we, typically this car this year has run really, really great, but just had a little bit of a motor issue yesterday and then had a brake issue in qualifying, so we didn't get to put, get to put a lap down. But the car's got a ton of speed in it. The uh, guy's been working super hard this weekend, so... I'm just going to go uh, see what we can do and give it hell and try to reward these guys who have been working hard uh, all weekend with a good finish and uh, put on a show for all the fans. 
Yeah, what do you think about these fans here for the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic? Yeah, there's like these pockets of the country that have these historic racetracks that, that, that just have this amazing built-in fan base. And Lime Rock's one of them. And, you know, it's, it's, I raced here from 2001 to 2006, and then I was gone and did like one IMSA race in 2017. That's the last time I was here. But I remember I was just telling somebody, you know, those pace laps coming out of turn one there, and you see the hillside and everybody hanging out, especially on a weekend like Memorial Day weekend. People take their time and spend their money and, and uh, be with all of us racers here at Lime Rock. It's such a, such a loyal crowd and, um, you know, so appreciative of each and every one of them to be here. Nice. Justin Marks, the number 99 track house Chevrolet Camaro. Now we're going to come back, talk to Amy Ruman. Amy Ruman, longtime racer. You love Lime Rock Park, don't you? And you especially love all the fans here. The fans are excellent. I mean, look at the turnout today. I mean, we have a great weather weekend. Uh, thanks to all our veterans, and we're remembering everyone today on Memorial Day for sure, first and foremost. And uh, thank you, the best country in the world. We get to do what we love to do, and uh, we couldn't be happier to be here back at Lion Rock. It's such a tradition, and uh, hopefully we'll have a great race today. Perfect, and look I at this. You, well, here comes Tommy Dreesy, fresh from losing some downforce. I'm coming to talk to you, Tommy. But you're in this beautiful McNichol Chevrolet Corvette. You've had a lot of experience here because Trans Am was here back in, what, 14, 15, 16. And uh, they're back, big crowds. What's your strategy when the green flag drops? Um, I think we're going to be patient today. It's, it's going to be, I think, I think we'll go green, green. Um, car counts down a little this year. So I think uh, to be patient but try to stay with pace. Um, it's not my best track. Uh, but we went the fastest we have ever so for myself personally so everyone's just really you know a lot of competition here and uh it, dyson's home track and their team's really good here and they've had a lot of practice and testing so um we're just going to try to hang in there and see what what today brings anything can happen in the race you got to be here at the end and as, as we all saw yesterday the only lap that counts is the last one so uh just watch that Indy 500 back, and you'll you'll understand what I'm talking about there. So, nice. hopefully, uh, we'll have a good one today. Perfect, Amy Room in there. So we're going to talk to Tommy Dreesy. Last year, two years ago, I bet him on this fan walk that if he did such and such in a race, that he would camp out, and he stayed true to that last year. He's probably slept a little bit better here this year card, in man. this Lucas Slick Mist Oil Lucas Oil Mav TV Ford Mustang. How does it feel? And I know that you love the fans here. Hey, the fans are great here. They always have been rain or shine. Um, we got a stacked field here. You know, it's going to be really competitive. Amy's behind me. We got the two Dyson cars in front, Panteric. Yeah, you know, uh, it's going to be a tough race, 70, 68 laps. So uh, let's all get through turn one clean. And uh, thank you to Lucas, my family at home, Lacey, Jagger, Dreesy, love you all. Hollywood. Nice. Tommy Dreesy, the rockin' Moroccan, moving my way up through the front. Chris Dyson, I would have loved to talk to you, man, but you were tardy. Color guard, right here, right here, right here. Camera's on Ben. All right, so we're going to introduce the color guard. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic, I was watching at noon, the flags were half-staffed, but just like doing their civic duty, they put them up right at noon for Memorial Day. And it is my immense honor to introduce the Connecticut Army National Guard for our color guard today here on Memorial Day. Beautiful colors from our color guard here from the National Guard. We have Lieutenant General Scott Rice is in the audience also. Honor to meet you, sir. Hey, it's and, to be uh, here. Thank you so much for being here for the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic. What does this mean to you? Oh, this is such a, uh, it, it just warms my heart to see everyone here. All the race fans, all the sponsors, but most importantly, all of our veterans. We will never forget those who served, who fought to keep us all free to be able to have a day like this. What a wonderful day. Beautiful. Now, I have to ask, though, seeing your patch, catfish, what's that about? 
Oh, when you're a fighter pilot, at some point in there, you do something kind of silly, sometimes stupid, sometimes crazy, and you get assigned a call sign. And so some crew chief called me the lowest, bottom-dwelling, worst guy he had ever met. I'm lower than a catfish, so there I get a call sign. I'm a bottom-dweller in an A-10. <laughs> nice. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming out. We're going to hear from you here in a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor... Reverend Heidi Tuttle, right? Truex. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Heidi Truex, Trinity Episcopal, but the Reverend. And uh, you've been given the invocation here for the Memorial Day Classic for a few years. Always one of my favorites every year, so no pressure. But let's give it over to Heidi Truex for the invocation here. Thank you. Let us pray. Giver of life and source of all goodness, Lord God, we are gathered here at Lime Rock Park for the excitement of racing. And also on this Memorial Day, we remember and honor those who made the sacrifice above all sacrifices their lives for our country, for justice, freedom, and peace for all people. Let us also remember with gratitude all our veterans who have served in wars of the past, and let us pray for all those in all branches of the military who are serving today. We keep you all in our prayers. Holy Spirit, send your blessing upon the drivers and crews who are participating in the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic today. As they embody the spirit of competition and adrenaline-fueled pursuit, May they exhibit not only skill and precision, but also a deep respect for the legacy of those who have served our country. There are so many volunteers and employees here, from those who work the track office to those in the Civil Air Patrol who help park our cars, from safety crews to EMTs and the food service workers, and all those in between. Bless all those who are making this sport here today possible safe, and so much fun. Bless us as we find joy and excitement in the thrill of the race, and when the day is over, may we all reach our homes safely and with great memories of Lime Rock in our hearts. Amen. 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 Reverend Heidi Truex, thank you so much. Oh, and look at this, ladies and gentlemen, crescendo to deliver the national anthem. So. Ladies, if you'll get real tight. And Crescendo, are you also from the church? Yes, um, based at the church. Yep, we've been around for 20 years. Nice, I love it. So Crescendo to deliver our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta say, I had the perfect seat for that, and I'm sure this mic couldn't pick it up like my ears could. Absolutely beautiful. So how, how long have you guys been doing that? Um, this is a premiere. We, <laughs> we did the anthem uh, in Torrington a few years ago for a baseball game, but no, 
I just wrote the arrangement last Tuesday, and we <laughs> practiced it once. Here we are. Wow. <laughs> well, beautiful arrangement. I think I had the bass next to me and the sopranos over here. Very nice. Unbelievable. Well, Jonathan, I don't think we're ever going to beat that. I'm going to send it up to you, and uh, we're going to go to some commercials, I believe. If your tooling isn't quite ready, and you need parts, and you need more parts than just a few, or if your run is just not that big, look to the experts in low-volume production, three-dimensional services. Whether it's 10, 100, or 1,000 parts, we can meet your needs. And if it's 10,000, we can do that too. Three-dimensional services delivers high-quality parts for short runs, 70% faster than industry standards. Three-dimensional services. Prototype. Production. Proven. I'm Richard Petty, and you might say I've had a fairly successful driving career. And you know the secret of my success? Having a good support team around me when I need it. Whether you're a route driver, over-the-road trucker, or you're interested in driving special purpose vehicles, Clean Harbors is the kind of place where you can build a long driving career. Do yourself a favor. Give Clean Harbors a call. Welcome back to Lime Rock Park for our Memorial Day Classic. And it has been a classic opening, a wonderful rendition to the national anthem. And a quick look at the grid. Matthew Brabham was the pole man alongside his teammate Chris Dyson. Big moment for them and CD Racing. Tommy Dreesey, David Pintarek, Amy Eruman and Danny Lowry leading in XGT. Justin Marks, Kerry Hitt, Marks with work to do. Randy Hale on row five and alongside him Nathan Bird, who's been in action already today in a single seater. Lee Saunders as ever, the man from Florida is here. Ricky Sanders and Michael Sire and Michael Attaway. That's how we line up for this Memorial Day Classic. Alongside me in the booth will be Ken Twaits. We'll get to hear from him in a moment, but let's head back down again to Ben Sissel as we get ready for those famous words. Well, thank you. For this Memorial Day Classic, we've got Lieutenant General Scott Rice here to deliver the most famous words in motorsports. So, Lieutenant General, take us away. I'm afraid I'm going to have to steal a few words from those in the past. I think uh, at Indianapolis 500, we had this famous British controller who said, what a great day for motor car racing. So this is yet another wonderful day. We really appreciate Trans Am being here as a part of this, joining the track, Lime Rock Park, with, with all the people here that work here and, and are part of this. But most importantly, Memorial Day is a day to remember. Remember all those who have given their life for our country and all of us to be able to be free and to enjoy these adventures and these events and stuff. So to all the race fans here, to all the sponsors here, to everyone who has helped and worked, it's just a wonderful day to be out and about and, and honor our veterans and those who have served and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. Well, you gotta, you got to give the start command. Oh, yes. Ready? Drivers, start your engines.
Well, tradition continues here at Lime Rock. 57 is David Pintarek's number, but it was also 1957 when it all began here at Lime Rock Park. And the tradition, as you have seen, continues here on this famous Memorial Weekend. In fact, when it comes to Trans Am, we first came here in 1967. The series started back in 1966. And since then, we've been here 37 times, and 20 of those have been on Memorial Day. And with that roar, I'd like to introduce a man who is very familiar with each and every car out there. He's raced against them, he's beaten some, he's uh, certainly gone wheel to wheel with most. His name, Ken Twaits, former XGT champion, and in fact, the first XGT champion and regular in TA. Ken, welcome to the booth, and I know it's an odd position for you to be in, but <laughs> great for us because you know these cars so well, and you also know every driver out there. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me, Jonathan. It's awesome. Um, it's funny being up here because you get kind of nervous in the race car when you're sitting there just before the engine start. And you know what? It hasn't changed. I'm up here nervous as, as it, I'll get out uh, at the, just before the start of this race. Well, it's, it's funny because you're absolutely right. This is a time where you finally get some silence and you, you finally get your head around what you're supposed to be doing, which is racing. But you're absolutely right. I, I've, I've had this happen many a times with drivers. They say, my word, it, it, I'm just as nervous as I usually am with the race. Yeah. We can see the previous winners. There's no betting against Chris Dyson today. And it would be somewhat apropro on their 40th uh, anniversary to celebrate CD Racing and Rob Dyson and Chris Dyson and what they brought to Lime Rock. Yeah, Chris is pretty formidable. He's got a great package, uh, great team, 40th anniversary. You know, they've been, since they've been pro racing, uh, that Ford Mustang that he has is very powerful. Um, they've been testing a lot during our spring break since uh, our race, uh, last race at Road Atlanta. So they're, they're queued up, and they're ready to go. And as you've seen, we'll be on board with Justin Marks. There's the championship as it stands. That's why I said earlier it's an important day for Tommy Dreesey. His season went awry after a qualifying incident last year at this very race. But as you can see, he's not out of touch with the dominant CD Racing team. And we're still not 100% sure whether... Matt Brabham will stay for the rest of the season. He's done so well. But don't forget, Mav TV, you can see all the action starting Thursday, June 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's TA2. And that'll be followed at 9 p.m. Eastern by this race, the TA, XGT, SGT, and GT. Do you miss XGT? Because that's really where you made. I know you yep. came back to racing then. Um, but it was a, a really great comeback for you. Yeah, XGT uh, was a, a great start. You know, it was the first year of the class. I had my Audi R8 LMS car, and uh, I, I battled with Eric Joyner in his uh, Porsche, and uh, it was great uh, mixing it up with these guys. But when I moved up to the TA class, I'll tell you what, there's no more thrilling car to drive than one of these things. Traffic is an issue here. Do you plan for that at Lime Rock, or how do you go about getting ready for this one. yeah you, you know you really have to pick and choose your your points and you got to know the driver that you're passing because some guys are, are really heads up and know what's mm -hmm. going on and uh you know when you get there you'll know how to pass them or you'll know how to back off here we go here we go and as you can see the two two cd racing cars side by side as we get ready for the start of this one and away we go Matthew Brabham in the pole on the left-hand side will try to take the lead away from his teammate and does so. Tommy Dreesey gets a good start. Pintarek's ahead of Ruman as we go on board with Justin Marks with work to do. He had that brake issue and, well, several issues, in fact. So watch for Justin Marks getting a good start here. He's currently in fifth place at the moment. And he tries to go a little wide out of the three-dimensional services bend left-hander. And now we head and open it up for the first time and coming up towards the Newman straight for the first time. Good clean start, Tommy Dreesey in a good position now. There's Amy Ruman in that famous Nichols 23, but it is Matthew Brabham who leads the way from his teammate Chris Dyson. Yep. Matthew Brabham was on pole. He's, he's leading now, and they're uh, driving away from uh, you know the main field here. Justin Marks got to clear Tommy Dreesey and Dave Pinteric in order to catch up to him. Yeah, I think Tommy's going to want to try to stay with him as best he can. Here oh, comes Dyson already. Here comes the move. Yeah. Well, Brabham's quite happy to pay second fiddle because Dyson's the one going for the championship. This is home race, of course. And uh, he'll want to lead from the front. 
And they've won every race so far. In fact, this uh, streak goes all the way back to Virginia last year for CD Racing. So it doesn't matter whether it's Masood or Brabham or Dyson. One of them is going to win, usually on a weekend. But this man in the Lucas number eight is trying to change all that. And he's done a good job so far, has Dreesi. I looked at the qualifying times. They qualified this morning. So conditions should be very similar, maybe a little bit warmer out there. Um, but he's got to stay with them, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, look at how tight the field is. Justin has moved up. Dreesi's hanging on right there. I mean, nobody's walking away from this one. This is going to be a, an exciting race here. Well, Justin Marks trying to get past Tommy Dreesi now as they dive into the Mission Foods turn one. For now, Dreesi holding on. He'll have the better line into turn two. Uh, he's going the long high way, is Justin, but he can't get through. And as they come towards the three dimensionals, left hander, I think uh, he's going to have to settle for now anyway. And really, Tell me, Ken, but the next opportunity for Justin is again on that main straight. Yeah, you know, turn one's the place to make the big pass here. Um, there's not a, a lot of opportunities besides that unless somebody makes a mistake. So he's, uh, you know, Tommy races fair. He's very quick. He's not going to give it away, though. Yeah, Justin Marks had some problems in qualifying. And, of course, he's got a busy day today because his NASCAR team, Track House, is racing. They didn't get to race the 600 from Charlotte last night because of rain. So I'm sure he'll be jumping straight out of this and onto the TV to watch his team in action. Daniel Suarez in the 99. But it's Dyson from Brabham and Dreesey. Good clean start. Marks is up to fourth early on. Pintarek in fifth. Ruman sixth. Lowry seventh. And leading in XGT ahead of Hale and Bird. Lee Saunders in... 11th place at the moment leads SGT and the GT class led by Michael Sire who's had a busy weekend in fact uh, he's been in a couple of races already so here comes Justin Marks and no problem with Tommy Dreesey he dispenses of him all right now the race is on those Jim Weed cars are so quick uh, Mike Lancey builds the engines for these guys they built uh, engines for Ganassi for nine straight years NASCAR fame uh, they're really strong, and they're going to be formidable today. Ken, what is it about TA? I was talking to Adam Andretti about this, and we'll talk more about Adam in a moment. But uh, uh, Adam said that he just loves the TA car compared maybe to anything else he's driven. And like yourself, he's driven lots of different cars. What is it about this particular car that, that, that is such a love affair? Well, they're 2,800 pounds. They make close to 900 horsepower. So they're very light and very powerful. They just take your breath away when you stand on the throttle. I'll they bet. just put you back in the seat and down the straightaway. There's just something else. It's really hard to describe. Well, let's talk, talk about this man, Danny Lowry, because that's an exciting car to be driving around Lime Rock as well, that Mercedes, and uh, doing a good job so far. Lowry leading and seventh overall, but leading in XGT. Yeah, you know, Danny Lowry's car, that, that Mercedes is really quick. A lot of downforce. It is the car to have this year. Paddle shift, ABS, traction control. It's a great car to drive. Um, but when you look at a TA car like this, no ABS, no traction control. This car can get away from you in a heartbeat if you're not careful. Chris Dyson looking for four wins in a row here at Lime Rock to kind of Put a footnote, if you like, on their 40th anniversary. He's won here in ALMS. He's won here in Trans Am. And when you look at the list of Trans Am winners over the years, starting back in 1967, when Peter Revson won in a Mercury Cougar. But uh, Mark Donner, who followed that up in 1968, then Sam Posey, the main straight we're on right now, named after him as Justin Marks, already having to deal with traffic as we go on board with him again. And he's caught right up to the CD racing team and now we've got a real race on our hands how does he play it from here now Ken? oh man look at this this is shaping up to be a good battle here nobody's checking out it's it's going to be a battle to the end I mean Brabham's got uh, Chris Dyson's backside uh, Justin's got to work on him and get by him and take the fight to the front you know well, let's hope for a good race here everybody races clean you know we're all friends Everybody's friends here. We, ra we try to race everybody clean. We respect each other. But, man, when it comes down to it, you still got to race everybody hard. Yeah, so Brabham's job here, if that is the job, is to try to defend the position he's in from Marks and let his teammate try to get away. Now, that's easier said than done. 
uh, when Marx is on the strip like he is and really pushing hard into turn one mission foods and Marx is as close as he's been but that's the job now, Matthew. Can you physically do that, or do you have to just concentrate on what you're doing yourself? Uh, he's got to concentrate on putting down the laps. They're running uh, low 51 second ranges with uh, you know a full load of fuel. These cars are heavy right now. They tend to want to understeer in the beginning, so you know running those kind of lap times that's a pretty good pace. And how does the feel of the car change over 100 miles? What's the biggest thing? Well, um, it, it starts to get loose. Uh, the rear tires start to get loose as the fuel load burns off, and, and you've got adjustable sway bars in the car, so you start moving back on that and soften that rear bar to put the, the grip to the rear of the car. And that helps you keep that grip rather than getting too loose, right? Yeah. And the, as the fuel load goes down, I guess the lighter car makes it harder to drive as well. Yeah, well, it's going faster, and it, the, the key is to keep the rear end underneath you. And as the fuel burns off, you just do a click of rear bar, and you, you just kind of time it to where it, you end up with their last adjustment with 10 laps to go. And how often are you talking to your engineer, and what kind of information do you want? Well, I just want to know... Uh, Gap times, you know, is anybody threatening from behind? Uh, are they getting away from me? What kind of lap times are they running? That type of thing. Uh, right now, Justin's just, uh, he, he knows what he's got to do. He's just taking his time now. He's, he's up with the lead pack. Nobody's checking out. Just mining his time. Fuel load is burning off. It, believe me, there's going to be some fireworks coming up. Yeah, and now they're starting to get into traffic. They're going past Michael Sire in the GT class and you can see Justin Marks just squeaking through there but he wanted to make sure he got through what he didn't want to do is go through uh, the twiddly bits as we say in England but you don't want to go through the tight corners uh, with a slower car in front you want to stay with the group that you're with uh, because this is how you can use the traffic and I'm sure that Chris Dyson's thinking in those turns but then again so is Justin Marks he's thinking now how can I use this traffic when Dyson comes upon it and has to kind of slow down a little bit uh, and use it to my advantage yeah, the traffic is a love-hate relationship, you know. You never know when you're going to catch them. you got to time it right. You back off a little bit, pass them at the right spot, and stick them between you and your competition. That's, that's what you're trying to do. Sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. We're on board with Tommy Dreesey as he comes into the last turn and down the Bennett Bridge Hall Hill. He just overtook Michael Sire himself, but he's still in fourth position. Here he comes at Division Foods. See, and Tommy's not, not losing touch either. He's just hanging around too. So if anybody has a problem with traffic, if anything happens, Tommy's right there to pounce. Yeah, I think Tommy on a day like this will be hoping that there is the odd caution that allows him to kind of concertina everybody together again. You can see now how they're dealing with traffic. The drone really gives you a great illustration from Lime Rock of just how hard it is to weave in and out of that traffic. Yep, you got carry hit on the inside. You got uh, the Porsche on the outside. I mean, you got to thread the needle here. And up, oh, see, there's Chris got a nice big gap because of traffic. Yeah, and that's Lee Saunders in the Viper. And Brabham's gone through. Marks has gone through. Now, this could be an opportunity for Justin Marks. He comes to the outside of the Mission Foods turn one. Brabham, though, is wise to it. And the vast experience of Brabham up against Justin Marks. Young Matthew Brabham coming from that, yes, famous family that of Brabham's. The world champion yeah. in his own right in truck yeah. racing. Matthew Brabham, I mean, his grandfather was Sir Jack Brabham. He Formula yep. One world champion multiple times. His dad, you know, was a fantastic IndyCar racer as well as GTP, GTP racer with Nissan. He's, uh, yeah, coming from a good family, and he's a fast driver himself. Yeah, there's not many places in the world that you don't bump into a Brabham somewhere, whether it be David, whether it be <laughs> Jeff, or whether it be Matt. And, of course, <laughs> we all live in memory of the great Sir Jack Brabham, three-time right. a Formula One world champion. Right. No pressure. <laughs> Tommy Greasy then making his way through, and this is a decent start for the Ford Mustang. If you remember, Ken, you were here last year, and, and poor old... Uh, Tommy uh, just hit some oil. He just didn't get the flag or the news that the, the oil or, or, or damage was down on the track coming down the hill, and he slid wide and into the wall and totally rode off the car. Oh, man, I was right behind him when that happened. I could see uh, power steering fluid being laid down by Amy. I could see the stripe. Tommy didn't see it. I come around, and he was buried deep in the tire wall on the exit of seven there. So uh, bad luck that year, but he's running a lot better now. I was saying earlier, Ken, Lime Rock 
when you look at a picture of it or, or you look at the circuit map, you go, oh, that's an easy circuit. But the truth is, you're, you're never, there's never time to rest, is there? No, I mean, you're busy the whole time, and it's, it's sort of like a, uh, an oval with one left-hander in it. You're just building up and building up. Still Dyson, Brabham, and Marks at the front. Dreesy holding on in fourth position. The gap four, four seconds to him. Uh, five seconds now, actually. Pintarek's just a second behind him, so he's still in the hunt. Ruman's still six. And then Lowry leading in XGT. And uh, SGT led by Lee Saunders in the 10th position. Yep, I race with Lee. He's a great racer. And that Viper he's got is really quick. He's uh, won the championship last year. So it's great to see him back out here. It's great to see him. It's so nice to have Lime Rock on a, on a beautiful day like this. Where it's always yeah. raining here. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember coming to Lime Rock without rain at least one day during the weekend, and it's been absolutely fabulous this whole weekend. So we look a little further back now. Here's the, the good battle. Here's the Audi. Uh, reminiscent of you out there in XGT about a few years ago, but it's a great car, that R8, isn't it? I love that R8, and I love uh, Attaway as well. He's a heads-up driver. Um, that bridge hall car, uh, Bennett bridge hall car, is is quick. He's a he's great to run with. Now, what's happened here though? He's coming out. Uh oh. So that is not a planned stop by any means. No, and that car is super dependable. So I wonder what's going on there. Well, we just saw a shot of Danny Lowry going through there, currently in seventh position and leading in XGT. And back to the leaders, and Justin Marks trying still to get past Brabham for now. And checking out at the front is Chris Dyson, so Marks not making any inroads yet. And at the moment, the control of this race after 16 laps is with Chris Dyson. We're on board now with Justin Marks, and you can see for yourself, Ken, if you were Justin, how would you play this? Would you just wait for a while and just sort of see how the race comes? Well, you know, he can't wait too long because Chris is going to leave the group here. Um, He's got to pick and choose. Matthew's doing his job and keeping Justin behind him. That's what he's paid to do, man. And uh, so he's going to have to clear him here pretty quick or else Chris is going to get away. We welcome our viewers back to Memorial Day at Lime Rock. And it's a beautiful day here. And the positions after 15 laps show us that Dyson and Brabham and CD Racing leading the way. Here's David Pintarek in the All-American colors for Memorial Day. And the whole team dressed up this weekend. He's supposed to be with his family as David, but he couldn't miss this one in the famous 57. And David in fifth at the moment has been a long time transact. You've gone wheel to wheel oh, with yeah. him many I, years. I love racing with David. He's a great racer. He's super quick. He's good to drive around. I mean, we had a battle at NOLA this year, so glad to see he made it at least for qualifying in the race today. So Chris Dyson now coming up on Danny Lowry. That's how quick it is around here. And how quick these, as you said, unlimited TA cars can get round in just, what, 50 seconds. In fact, uh, Brabham did a time of 50.6 at Dreesy 51.5. Justin Marks, 50.7. So we've got a straight battle now between these two. The 16 of Chris Dyson, Matt Brabham in the number 20, and Justin Marks. We're on board with Dyson now. This is his view. Yeah. There's nothing better than having a view of daylight in front of you <laughs> and the whole field behind you. Now, Chris's job right now is just put, put your head down and put a gap between you and the rest of the field. That's what he does best. Yeah, and from overhead, you, you get a nice perspective of what is coming ahead of him and what kind of traffic he's got to deal with. He's just about to take over or overtake the Porsche through West Bend and then down the hill he'll come. Here he is. I love watching Chris race because he's so smooth. There's never any drama, it seems, anyway. Yeah, he's There's a bit of drama there for Justin Marks. He just went a little, just touched the wheel onto the dirt there. And you know that, what well, that's like. That can end in tears. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go off there because the Armco's sitting right there to gobble you up if you get too much grass between you and the pavement. So, you know, he's just, uh, he's dropping back a little bit. I don't know if the tires are going off or what's happening, but... Uh, Matthew's starting to catch back up to Chris. Yeah, you can see the gap for yourself. Justin Marks with a little bit of work to do, but he's not out of touch. And here is Lee Saunders. 
Lee Saunders from Florida, a former SGT champion and a regular here in Trans Am. Yeah. Viper of Saunders in 11th overall. And second place. He's chasing down Saunders. Curry Head. He's what? He's chasing down Kerry Hit. Yeah, he is. There's Michael Attaway's back out on the track again. They must have solved well, what they're, they got going on. Yeah, Kerry. It's good to have Kerry Hit out there as well. Haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, Another he, regular. Yeah, he's a regular. He had a, some medical issues last year, and now he's got that sorted out, and he's back in the Trans Am car. He's a great driver, especially for a guy in his 70s. Yeah, you know, David Pintarek had, um, you know, a touch of the whole l Lurgy with Coburn and was worried about coming back. And uh, when he did, it was a very emotional weekend for him. And he, he was really worried that he wouldn't have the strength to come back. But he's done just that. And it's great to have him back to full fitness. And so still pedaling hard in fifth place, David Pintarek. Yep. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it was really challenged for David because he didn't practice on Saturday at all. He came no. up, unloaded the car, had to qualify. He only got 15 minutes of qualifying, and now you're in the race. I mean, wow, you gotta, you gotta get get sorted out pretty quickly, and get your brain yeah, switched and let's on. Underemphasize just how physical it is. It looks smooth. It's always funny. You look smooth from the from the outside, doesn't it? But I've I've been alongside some of you guys, uh, not in a race, mind you, but just just out on a on a on a track. And boy, it's almost violent, isn't it? Yeah, it's this track. There's no time to rest, really. The, the straightaway, perhaps, but it only lasts a couple of seconds. It's not a very long straightaway. And the rest of the time, you're turning, and uh, the G load is pretty strong, and you're going uphill. That takes a lot of concentration. Uh, in fact, if you want to know where that G load is, if you look at this round circle by the um, speedometer, you can see that it's at 77. Well, that little red dot that you see in that circle, that is the G-force acting yep. on the body. So when it goes to the left like that, that's the G-force acting on the right-hand side of your body and pushing you effectively, although you can't move, but that's how it affects you. Yep. You can see Justin, he's in traffic now. He's got to work, weave his way through, and Matthew's just right ahead of him there. Yeah, no dramas yet so far, but there's a long way to go in this uh, race. 22 of the 68 gone, and anything can happen and change things. We only need one car to go off or somebody to have an issue, uh, and we'll be under safety. And we've seen it many, many times here at Lime Rock. You can build up a, all the leads you want, but then it can all come to naught if the safety car comes out. Yeah, you know, typically these uh, TA races will go green to green. Uh, there's the field isn't very very large um, and people don't get into trouble like in a TA2 race so you got to be pre pre be prepared to go the whole way but if a caution comes out and they stack everything back up again wow look out Ken we we often talk in commentary about managing tires tell me what that means how do you manage tires over 100 uh, miles and why do you well Joe Nemechek gave me a really good tip about managing tires he goes every time you spin the rear tires on the exit of a corner you're going to lose five laps of grip so once he put it into those terms it made perfect sense to me so you're you're trying not to spin those rear tires and put too much heat in them and make them slick so you're you're trying to be smooth don't get sideways really be gentle with the throttle and apply the power uh, that type of thing. And the more you save, the more you're going to have in the end of the race. And that's kind of what Justin's doing now, what Matthew's doing now. And you know what? That's what Chris is doing now. They're, they're saving their stuff for the end of the race so they can pour it on. And, you know, Chris is going to protect his lead as best he can. Good battle of the Porsches going on here. Yeah, they got a good race going on. Porsches are so quick around here. They handle yeah, so well. Perfect car, really. Well, we've got Porsche versus Corvette in this particular case. Yeah, it's a very good, it's, it's, a, it's a dark art managing tires, no question about it. And, uh, yeah, I think here at Lime Rock, you pick your battles, right? If you get embroiled into a heavy battle where you're toing and froing, then that's also going to waste tires, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're going you're gonna to use up your stuff before you get to the front of the fight. And next thing you know, you got a car that's not handling well at all, and there's nothing you can do about it. And the rest of the race becomes absolutely miserable <laughs> as you try to keep your car on the road. 
We've been watching Nathan Bird in the 88, the uh, Sinesta Tilson Hope Givers Porsche 911 GTS, or GT3 Cup car, excuse me. And intermission boots turn one again. Yep, he's at the front of the fight here. Dave Penteric's working his way through there. And this is a nice little four-way group here with Amy Ruman at the back of it. She's fighting with David Pintaric, and yet the other two cars are in their own battle. So this is good stuff. You're not missing anything at the front. Dyson's got a two-second lead over his teammate. Mark still very much in the hunt. Yeah, Amy and Dave are having a good fight here. He's now cleared the traffic. David's on his way out. And let's see if Amy can get yeah, Amy through here get and past. catch right back up to him. Amy Ruman, another stalwart of this championship, a two-time champion in her own right a few years ago, uh, but has stuck with the Corvette for many years now, and that uh, McNichols 23 is synonymous with TA Racing. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine, and she, you know what? She is a great driver, and she is tough to race against. She protects her line. She makes it really tough to get around her. She drives the whitest car in the field. <laughs> now, what's going on here with the 22? It looks like Kerry Hitt has had some problems. Now he's on his way back out. Yeah, so Kerry Hitt in and out. I don't think it was a, a forced stop. I think he was coming to check something. But he's back out on track. And now Amy has cleared the other two cars. And now goes in pursuit of David Pintaric. Yep. This is a battle for fifth place overall. Pintaric currently in fifth. And Ruman in sixth. Now, the gap between Dyson and Brabham come down a little bit, 1.5 seconds, and Marks has gone with it. So in a moment, I'm sure we'll go back to the leaders and see if there's been any change at the front. But I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think Dyson just dealing with traffic, and it will ebb and flow between 1.5 and maybe less than a second. But if I know Dyson, he's controlling this race from the front. Yep, I mean, we're coming up to the halfway point here pretty quick. So, you know, it's, it's kind of settling in, and again, as the, this is kind of where the fastest laps of the race come in. You've got the, a lighter fuel load with fresher tires. And um, this is when the good times are going to be set. At the end of the race, you're out of tire. You're light on fuel. So we'll see what happens. We'll see who has the best car at the end. You know, I was talking to Chris Dyson earlier in the weekend, and I was asking him about, you know, racing at Lime Rock and his memories. You know, we, we're celebrating Paul as we go down the Paul Newman straight. We're celebrating the fact that it's a 30th, 7th anniversary for Paul Newman, who did his first Trans Am race and his last ever turn of a wheel here at Lime Rock when he was 83 years of age. Oh, that's a moment oh. that you don't want when you're leading a race. And that's oh, also played in the hands of Justin Marks, second place. Justin Marks pounces on a mistake by the 20 of Brabham, who just went slightly wide. And I said it to you, didn't I, Ken, that that's a place where one wheel could make a big difference. Yep, it's just like what we were talking about. You ran a little wide there, got some wheels off in the grass, had to back out of the throttle, left the door wide open for Justin Marks. And now the plan for CD Racing is out the window because Marks is unfettered and goes in pursuit of Chris Dyson, and Brabham will try to bounce back as quickly as possible. He wants to get on top of this. Here's another look at it, Ken. Yep, two wheels off. you got to get out of the throttle. And just is on, Justin's on it, gets an inside run. Yeah, it's it's easy to do. It sucks you downhill, doesn't it? And it's yeah. so easy to make that mistake. Yep. The tires are starting to get slippery, you know, and it's going to run wide. Now the race is on. You know, Justin's got one car to go, right? He's got to put his head down and catch back up to Chris, start putting the pressure on. But Chris, you know, he is so good under pressure. He's not going to, you know, he's not going to give it up. No, but it's going to be constant traffic, isn't it? They're so, the, the TA cars are so much quicker than the GTs and the SGTs that uh, he's going to be constantly coming up on different cars, isn't he? Yep. See, and Amy drives that wide car, although, she, you know, she's about to get lapped by, by the leader. She's not going to put up too big of a fight. No. Shouldn't. She's a pro. A lot of respect as well. She, she knows when she sees that CD car racing... Jim Weed car that uh, that's the leader. She'll have no no qualms about that. And in fact, she does stay offline and let uh, Brabham through as well. As we go back on board with Tommy Dreesey coming under the bridge. Man, that's a beautiful race car, don't you think? Yeah, it's lovely. 
It sounds good, and Tommy can drive the wheels off this thing. I gave him a hard time. I said, hey, Map TV want you to win this race, and you've got it planted all over your car. How about it? And he goes, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> he tries 100% the whole distance. You know, every session of every weekend, he runs every single lap. He, he doesn't care about tire wear. He doesn't care about anything. He wants to get as much track time as possible. Yeah, he's a lot of fun to be with. We often use the radio with him on the warm-up lap. We get to hear from his perspective what's going on. So the car's having to go offline now to use and deal with the traffic. So that's always a factor, too. There's quite a lot of dust and dirt being thrown up from that turn seven. But as you can see, Brabham is passed as well. And now we've got a straight fight between the top three. But still, Dyson There's dealing traffic. with traffic. And now Look this is that. the closest Marks has been. You see what I mean? It either works in your favor or it doesn't. Chris Dyson is like yelling something that I can't repeat right <laughs> now. <laughs> but this is the opportunity for Marks. If he can make one of these stick. And I tell you what, he's brave. He's still he's carrying the number, of course, that his oh own boy. team carries in NASCAR with uh, Daniel Suarez. Oh, man. Pinteric's not giving him any breaks either. We're up the inside. Nicely done. Justin Marks makes it stick. And that was a lovely move. Wow. An unusual one, too. Yep. Unfortunately, Chris Dyson got caught up in traffic uh, trying to lap Dave Pinteric here, and Dave didn't cut him any slack and left the door open for Justin. So Justin Marks takes the lead of this one ahead of Chris Dyson, using the traffic very well indeed, Justin Marks. And remember, Marks having problems in qualifying, and that put him back on the grid because he had been fastest in the first practice. But now, the 99, right where he needs to be. He's got Pentarek in front of him, but he's still got Chris Dyson hovering there in second place. Here, what a clear Pentarek as soon as he can. Terry Hitt gets out of the way. Kerry Hitt, excuse me, gets out of the way. But uh, Marks now wanting to clear Pentarek as soon as he can. He'll try to do it down the Samposi straight. Here we are. Yep. Now's the time to do it. Let's pop out. Let's get underneath Pinteric. Ooh, Looks and Pinteric's not making it easy. And why should he? <laughs> he can't get past him, and that's nope. allowed Dyson right there. And Brabham's there as well. That there the he three goes. Of them he will try to get through. Past him. Now he's letting the leaders through. Here we go. We've got a cracking race on here. Oh, the two CD awesome. racing cars in pursuit of Justin Marks from Trackhouse Racing. This is what we came for, folks. This is a good Trans Am race here. Yeah, these guys are definitely on a level field as well because Marks is quick. Uh, if there's anybody going to challenge Chris Dyson this year, I would put my money on Justin Marks. Now, he's not doing the full season. He's got to run a NASCAR team. But, uh, but he is, uh, whenever he's got the chance, um, and uh, there's been very few that he's missed, he's going to get out here on a Sunday and mix it up with these boys. Yeah, Justin Marks, the two races earlier this year, he put it on pole at pole at Sebring, pole at NOLA. Um, he had to miss Atlanta because of commitments with the Trackhouse Racing Team in NASCAR. Uh, but he's back here at Lime Rock, and now he's leading the race. So that's awesome. Did a remarkable job at NOLA where he went off on the first lap and had to make his way all the way through back to third. Uh, so Justin Marks not afraid to mix it up with the big boys of Trans Am. Yeah. Well, you know, the race isn't over, though. So then Justin Marks leads the way ahead of Dyson, Brabham, Dreesy, Pintaric. That's how it stands on the top five. Lowry still leading in XGT. And as you can see, the traffic just getting out of the way of the faster cars, quite rightly. Saunders leading in SGT ahead of Ricky Sanders in 11th place. And Michael Sire leading the way in GT ahead of Michael Attaway, who's currently 14th. Kerry hit between them. But now these two leaders and Justin Marks, that's the battle we're watching to see if these T8 cars can continue this drive of hardness and toughness around this Lime Rock track. And when do you start to get physically weary? Because it's hot. I, I know you wear a cool suit, but, you know, does it do everything? Yeah, and Justin even made the comment to me after practice. He, he goes, man, I, don't, I didn't realize how physical this place was. I forgot. He hasn't been here since 2017. And, man, it's a good thing he works out. He's going to need it today. Yeah, and physically with the heat like this, it's almost nicer when it's raining. It's a bit cooler, but you'll feel the heat. The asphalt heats up so quickly, too, that, that we, we often give the track temperature as well as the ambient temperature, and the ambient temperature is often sometimes 
20 degrees less than how quick the asphalt heats up. Right. you got to use all the tools that you have. Your cool suit, you know, that helps your body temperature, but you also have to drink. You have to have to put the drink bottle, uh, take a sip down the straightaway every lap just to make sure you stay hydrated and in the game here. Yeah, and I bet it's a disaster if that packs up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had races where my drink bottle didn't work, and, boy, towards the end, my tongue was sticking to the roof of my mouth. It was tough. <laughs> Well, this has been an intriguing battle so far, and it's Marks versus Dyson and Brabham. There he is, Justin Marks. You can see the gap for yourself. Still a long way to go, 37 of the 68. So they've got to bide their time. There's no need for heroics just yet. And yeah. Dyson will stay in second place, and Brabham just hovering around. And will stay, if he can, with this group to see if he's useful to help. I, I say help, uh, Dyson, because Brabham's very much in this championship uh, at the moment, coming into this one. Dyson leads the way, but it's Brabham in second place. Uh, right. Just 15 points between them. Right. I mean, I think the goal here for, for the Dyson team is st just stay in touch, bide your time. There's still 30 t laps to go, 29 laps to go. Anything can happen. You know, Chris got caught up in traffic. Maybe the same thing will happen to Justin Marks. Yeah, Matthew Brabham, great character, loves his Trans Am racing. He's been doing a bit of super truck racing as well. He actually was driving the... Uh, IndyCar double-seater at Longbridge, you know, the one that Mario drives at the 500, Mario Andretti. Right. And, uh, yeah, so that was a thrill for him to do that. I bet a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, Matthew's got a great relationship with the Dyson family. It's their 40th anniversary uh, this weekend since their pro debut. 40 years at Lime Rock. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was talking to Chris, and he said it used to be when he was a little boy, he'd sit up on the hill. Um, just like all the other kids up there today, and dream one day of being up against the big boys of Trans Am. And now he's fulfilled that dream, oh. and very much so. Oh, yeah. Well, he is the poster yep. child of Trans Am. I mean, he's got the DNA, and he can drive the wheels off that Mustang. Yeah, no doubt about it. In these parts, the Dyson name is synonymous with Lime Rock for sure. Now, one of the things you have to remember here, Justin Marks is, is in a Riley AR3. It's right. a brand-new chassis. Uh, Chris Dyson is in a brand new Riley AR3, but we have different power plants, right? You could have a, the R07 Chevrolet that's in Justin's car, 850 plus horsepower. You have the FR9 Ford engine. Uh, you know they're both Xfinity engines, and it, it but tuned for road racing and unrestricted. So both of them are putting out 850 plus. And it's funny, they don't tell me exactly how much horsepower <laughs> they put out. How, what's the feedback on the Riley? What, what, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a new iteration of a chassis for Trans Am, um, but what's been the feedback? Well, it's it's a great car to drive. It has adjustable power steering. It's got kind of the nuances that you like to have as a driver. You can dial in the steering just the way you want. It's got a, a great front panel in it. So you've got all the, the latest, greatest electronics that you need to make decisions when you're driving a car. So it's those type of things that are good. But for the most part, they're just like all the other cars when it comes to tuning them and, and racing them and driving them. Same type of driving. Justin Marks doing a tremendous job here. He's gapped Dyson to 2.7 seconds. It's not panic time yet for Dyson, but he'll want to try to stay in touch with him if he's going to try to win this race. They've all got to deal with the traffic. Uh, but Dyson being held up here but gets past now. But uh, Dyson's going to have to put the hurry up on or he's going to lose touch with Justin Marks. 2.7 is almost too comfortable. Yeah, he really got hung up in turn three and turn four there with the, with the back marker. So, man, it's just a roll of the dice when you're going to catch these guys and pass them and stay in touch with the leader. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on the lap times as they cross the line again. And last time out, Marks did a 51.5. So the, the top times have come down a little bit. But that's as you'd expect as the race goes on. Yeah, Chris is running a 51-15. Um, so that's still a great time with this many laps on those tires. Yeah, they're all in the 51s now. Dreesy's dropped back to the 52s. Uh, his best lap of 51-5. So he's knocked that down a bit. Lowry now up to seventh overall behind Amy Ruman and leading that XGT crowd in the Mercedes. Yeah, he does a good job. You know, he, he caught me at Atlanta and says, Ken, 
you need to get one of these Mercedes and let's go racing this. Ah. You know, I, I get tempted everywhere I go here. So, you know, I made a promise. I'm retired from race driving. Yeah, I'm going to be a team owner. That. Yeah, Michael Schumacher said that. So did, so did, <laughs> so did Jordan. That's right. <laughs> Kent Waits has been a... Since I've been doing Trans Am, since 2018, has been a regular and has had to tie, or had to, or decided anyway, to hang it up. But I don't think he's, he's not 100% sure on the decision yet. Well, it's tough. You know, you got to give give it 100%. And, and, and these Trans Am. Oh, no. Are, oh, no. Is that Treacy in I the tire wall? That is Treacy in the tire oh, wall. Oh, no. I hope I can't he's okay. It. Yeah, that's a big off. Uh, that's if it a big for shot. Bad luck, poor old Tommy Treacy. So we're under caution. No surprise after that big off. David Hootsar, race director, immediately putting that out, seeing what we saw, which is uh, what looked like, I won't confirm it yet, but looked like Tommy Dreesey. Yeah, it looked like, track. like the exit of turn six or something, uh, just about ready to come down the hill. So all the work that uh, Justin Marks have put into Gap, Chris Dyson will come to naught. That's okay by us, but uh, let's just hope for a second that uh, yeah. Tommy's okay because that looked like a big off. He's deep Is in those tires. West Bend or off the course? It could be at the bottom, but I, you know where he went off last year. Yeah, but it, it looked like it was uphill though, so he could have dropped a wheel on the exit of six and spun around and collected that inside barrier. So we're under caution after what has been a relatively clean race so far. It's Marks, Dyson, and Brabham. That's your top three. Yeah. Let's see if that window net comes down for Tommy and let us know that he's okay. Yeah, by the way, that, that, so you know, that's sort of the inside racer's way of letting both the fellow competitors and the marshals know that you are okay, is to let that net down. Oh, man. Let's see. Maybe, maybe we can see, pick him up here on the inside as we come down the hill. Yeah. It's around this area, that's for sure. And everybody's slowing right down, quite rightly. And uh, as you can see, the track car's on track now. There's the Aston Martin circulating. Marshalls do a great job here. And the recovery guys, too. Very quick, indeed, to get to somebody. And a single-seater. Yeah, they're really good, you know. And uh, we have this Flagtronics device inside yes. the race car now which really, really helps. It, it gives you the, a yellow flag, a green flag, a checkered flag, um, that type of thing, so you can see inside your car what the conditions are uh, even before you get to the flag station. Yeah, and that's an iteration we put on this season, uh, and it, it is a big deal because, yes, the flags, the traditional flags that the human marshals put out um, are there to be seen, but it's, even, it's almost like a, a backup system in many ways. When you see that light on your dash and it is in the perfect position you know exactly what's happening and you can react quickly Kyle. yeah i mean in a situation like a red flag situation where everybody's got to stop on track or a black flag all it will flash black black flag and all and um you know when to come into the pits it really is a good information it's great for the safety for everybody So we're under caution, and we are behind the safety car. Justin Marks had just taken the lead a few laps ago ahead of the two CD racing Jim Weed Mustangs. And as you can see, a little bit of traffic between Chris Dyson and Matthew Brabham, but that won't be hard to sort out. And we've had an incident involving car number eight, Tommy Dreesey. It's great to see the Bennett Bridge Hall car out there. They've been a great sponsor of some cars and of the Trans Am series. Those guys are great. Glad they're involved. So let's head down to the pits and get the latest with Ben Sissel.
Check, check, one, two. Hey, hey. Check, 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 check. Yeah, thank you. I'm here in the 3GT tent with Tony Genelosi, the team manager for Tommy Dreesey. What's your driver saying? Uh, first of all, most importantly, he's saying that he's okay. He's not hurt. He's out of the car. He got a little crossed up in traffic and made a mistake. It happens. We're, we're just really glad that he's okay. Yeah, and I see now, uh, great that the driver's okay. We love having Tommy Dreesey here in that beautiful Lucas 3GT car. But I'm hearing now they're about to bring everybody in for a red flag. So, Jonathan, we're about to go through red flag protocols. Hopefully I'll be able to walk up the aisle and talk to a lot of the drivers. But I'm just so glad that Tommy Dreesey's okay, and he'll be back racing with us in that beautiful 3GT Mustang Lucas Oil Mav TV car. Good work, Ben. Yeah, and as you saw, uh, the car finally extracted from the tire barriers there, but a big hit. Yeah, ben. oh, man, he was buried deep in there. I'm glad that he's okay. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a dance out there. You've got to dance around slower traffic and keep the car on the track and keep going fast. You know, it's, it gets tough, and, you know, it sounds like he dropped a wheel off and it got sucked into the tire wall. Yeah, and uh, good to hear that uh, he took uh, responsibility and said, my, my bad type thing. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, he's a okay because it can go wrong quickly. Yeah, and this is the right thing to do, you know, is to have a red flag, let the corner workers be safe and get that car out of there and get it on the tow truck and, and get it down to the pits, clean up the track so that we can have clean racing to begin with. And, man, this is going to be a good sprint to the finish. There, <laughs> see, there he goes. Yeah, oh, that was a man. Big one. Oh, oh man. yeah. So he was under. Yeah, he was coming out of West Bend before coming down the Bridge yeah. Hall Bennett's turn, right. and and just got unsighted. So it looked like the off. exit of six. Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow! What a shot. Yeah, that is uh, a big off, and uh, let's hope Tommy's a okay. But he, he has reported back to his team, as you heard, that uh, he's okay. So we're set up for a big shootout in the end. How many laps do we have to go? About twenty or so. Yeah, about that. Um, I'm not 100% sure because we were under safety for a couple of laps. Um, but, yeah, we, we are ready for a, a sprint restart, so to speak. So you reset everything. You go back to zero, and, it, you know, it's going to be, you know, a great race to the finish. This is awesome. So what would you be saying to your engineer now? Because, obviously, the car's sitting there heating. Yeah, I mean, you've got to keep your eye on the gauges. You've uh, Ah, I've, good to see that. Oh, there Tommy's he is. Tommy's out, and there he he's is. fine, yeah. Good job, Tommy. Glad that he's okay. Yeah. Well, you're, you're sitting there. The, the car should be shut off at this point because it'll overheat just sitting there uh, idling, especially after you, with all the race temperatures. Yeah. Um, everything's cooling off. Make sure your foot's off the brake pedal so the pads aren't sticking to a hot rotor, that type of thing. Um, and then, you know, then you got your fingers crossed that that thing's going to fire back up when you go to start it again, and you have <laughs> to take off behind. I mean, these things get hot, and they get hard to start. So, you know, every you, you got a lump in your throat right before they start the engines and, and continue on here. Does it change your strategy in any way? Because obviously you're not running laps right now, so you're saving tire, so to speak. Um, does that help? Uh, coming to a stop like this for the tires to cool well, down or make it worse? I don't know. You know, you, when. Yeah, here comes, there's Amy. Well, the blue flags are oh, out, as you can see, see. Tommy's headed right there, boy. Yeah, the, the Porsche in front of him was on the racing line and almost, not unsighted, uh, but you could see the blue flags for yourself. So they were trying to warn the Porsche that the traffic, you know, that Tommy was coming. But uh, Tommy obviously took avoiding action there, and it's come yeah. off worse for him. You know, at this, at this time of the race, this distance of the race, you're hot. You're tired, you're thirsty, and your concentration level can drop off every now and then. You, you know, I know it's hard to believe, but you can start daydreaming in these cars. Literally, I'm, I'm serious, and you can lose focus, and sometimes that can happen. Well, obviously, while we've got a bit of time stopped, uh, it gives us a chance to catch up with some stories. Uh, ben Sissel is down in the pit lane. Ben, what's happening down there? 
Yeah, thank you. I'm here on pit lane with this beautiful Audi of Mike Attaway. And, Mike, I saw you come in early. I talked to your crew. Your cool shirt's not working. Is that what's happening? Yeah, no, it's not working at all. We uh, went out on the other day, and we got it back working, and it quit this first lap. And it is, it is hot here at the Trans Am Memorial Classic, and that's not like Cool Shirt. And I know you're good friends with Matt Gooch from Cool Shirt, so what would you like to say to him right now? Matt, give me a call in the morning. Real important. <laughs> he says give him a call. But other than that, Mike, how is it out there in this mixed field? Uh, great. You just got to keep your eyes and ears open waiting on those TA cars to come because they come by quick. Way, give us give them a blinker and go. They come up on you quick, don't they? They do very fast. All right. All right. Hey, Mike. Thank you very much. Mike's out here in this beautiful Audi number ninety-one in the GT class. And then uh, before I throw, no, I'm going to go to Randy Hale here. Randy Hale. You can see he's buckling up. Randy's out here in XGT. A fantastic battle throughout all of GT classes today here. Randy, how's it going out there? Well, I'll give you a better answer than Sebring. Like I said, horrible. So I'm making up for it. We're having a blast. Nathan and I are having a great battle. Danny's doing a great job in the Mercedes. He's kicking our ass, but we're trying to keep up with him. But we're, it's a lot of fun home track. My family's all here. <laughs> so it's been a great day. Well, then let's give a shout out to your family. As you're coming around two and three and you see that crowd up on the hill for the Memorial Day Classic, that's got to mean a lot. But where's your family watching from? I think they're up on the hill. So my fiance Diane, my daughter Do uh, Skyler. And Jamie, Diane's daughter, and my son's at home watching the internet because he wanted to play video games. We promised he'd take a break to watch the race, but I don't really believe him. <laughs> well, Randy Hale out there in this number 31. Jonathan, I'm going to send it back to you. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, what he's not telling you is he's actually practicing on the sim. He's going round Lime Rock, and he's going to come and challenge you, Randy. So that's, that's what you've got to watch out when you get home. He's, he's practicing. That's the truth. Anyway, we're going to take a short break here from Lime Rock in a few seconds. But we are under a red flag situation here, as you can see. It's a very strange situation to be looking at because you're looking at a stopped race at the moment and it's being led by Justin Marks. I think we'll get a rolling start. That's my assessment. But it's a shame to see everything come to naught. But the reason why we've come to a stop is we are extracting uh, Tommy Dreese's car from the tire wall and probably repairing that tire wall as well. Uh, uh, there you can see the work going on. And when they've done that work, we'll be able to resume racing. So stay with us here from Memorial Weekend here at Lime Rock. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more action from Lime Rock after this. You've got a business to run, big and heavy products to ship, and customers who need them now. When you've got the right driver and the right equipment, you can bet on a spectacular result. Bennett understands complex logistics and puts the best team, the most time, and the latest technology into every customer relationship. So you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the race. Let us handle the rest. Together. Together, we can move anything. commercial break. If your tooling isn't quite ready, and you need parts, and you need more parts than just a few, or if your run is just not that big, look to the experts in low-volume production, three-dimensional services. Whether it's 10, 100, or 1,000 parts, we can meet your needs. And if it's 10,000, we can do that too. Three-dimensional services delivers high-quality parts for short runs, 70% faster than industry standards. Three-dimensional services. Prototype. Production. Proven.
Welcome back to Lime Rock. As you can see, some extensive work going on on the tyre barriers. No, we're not digging out Tommy's car. That's gone. Uh, but Tommy hit that uh, barrier pretty hard just before the bridge and just after West Bend. Uh, the big machine vodka spike coolers West Bend uh, of today. And as you can see, they're trying to replace uh, the tyres that were moved. And, and, and there's an important reason for that, uh, alongside me, Ken Twaits, um, is that you don't want to restart a race without everything as it was before. Yeah, you got to put it all back together because, you know, what if you have another situation yeah. where that car hits that same spot? And it, it's not built correctly, and, you know, it's got to be able to do its job again the same way. You know, we were talking about, he was talking about Michael Attaway, and yeah. I don't know if everybody looked, but you could see a blinker go on. Well, slower traffic, if they have them, they'll throw on a blinker, and he's not turning in that direction. He's actually communicating with the lap car, the car lapping him, telling him which side he wants you to pass him on. Good point. So... You know, it's kind of, we all kind of work together. He And it lets you know, the overtaking driver, that he actually sees you. He's telling you where he wants you to go. Yeah, and you often see in single seaters, they literally put their hand out uh, to do that because obviously you don't have blinkers on a single seater. So, yeah, it's just a sort of international term for pass me. I see you, pass me here, or pass me on this side. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, it was a, a strange part of the circuit that Tommy was coming up because it is a slightly blind. You're just dipping down there. So you're making that transition from, from full sight to no sight. And it was just in that moment that Tommy um, felt that uh, the Porsche in front of him may not have seen him. So, yeah. Well, it's that time of the race, right, where the rear ends, you start to lose the rear end. You start losing that grip. And he must have got a little sideways, and once it hooked, it shot him right into the guardrail. So a little work to do here. We are under red flag situation. There's the crowd under the trees. You can't see them until you get the drone on them, but everybody huddles into the shade, which is a very good idea. Um, but a great crowd, as always, here at Lime Rock. You, do, you must love coming here. I love coming here. It's a beautiful part of the country. I, I drove the motorhome up here from Nashville. Nice. Uh, it's 1,000 miles, uh, but, man, it's great when you get here. I was sitting on that hill last year spotting for Cameron Lawrence. The only difference was it was pouring down rain, and I had no umbrella. <laughs> Yes, I've been here at Lime Rock uh, a fair few years now, and almost every year at least one of the days is wet. But this year, no, it's been It's awesome. been fantastic. It's great racing weather, great city hall weather. They should be advertising this every, every Memorial Day. You know, and we actually camped on the inside with all the other campers with, with the motorhome and stuff, and we met some cool, cool people uh, besides us. We had beverages together we you know had food together and we, we're also kind of looking out for each other it's really fun meeting new people yeah talking of looking out for each other i just want to put a shout out to my usual co-commentator um, delighted to have ken here this weekend but adam andretti uh sadly uh, his mum has passed away and obviously he's gone to be with his family and so therefore we wish you all the best Yep. to the Andretti family, and especially to Adam, who is, I would argue, one of the, well, just one of the bedrocks he's, of Trans Am. Isn't yeah, he? he's a good friend of mine, and he's awesome. And my condolences, bud, you know, I feel for you, and our heart's with you. Yep. His mum, Carolyn Corky Andretti. And we'll talk more about her later, but uh, we wish all of the Andrettis well. Interesting, I didn't know this, but Adam was telling me that Mario won his first race here. Uh, in a midget. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. <laughs> well, it's kind of like an oval, except there's one left-hand turn right in the middle <laughs> exactly. of it. It messes everything you know, up. Well, you know what? It's funny. Chris Dyson was talking. He said, you know, I said, how do you set up the car? And he said, we almost have to set it up like an oval. Yeah. That's what we do. We we kind of set it up that way, and we just kind of tippy-toe around the left-hander at turn three. Um, also, you've got – it's a funny thing uh, – as you go up the hill at turn five, um, you know, you, it's a jump. You, the car will actually wheelie if you don't pre-jump the car. And if you get too much air under the front wheels, it'll slam down on the pavement. We actually bent a lower right front control arm on Justice's car yesterday. So um, you don't want to do that. I just heard that Ben is... 
working hard and getting around. And I think he's got one of the Dysons, or at least one of the team from Chris Dyson Racing. Uh, let's head down to Ben Sissel. Sorry, that's my fault. I didn't have my mic on. I'm here. It's an honor to be here with Rob Dyson, celebrating 40 years of Dyson racing at your home track, fresh from Indianapolis because you're the chairman of the Indy Museum, one of the greatest museums to, to ever house anything with motorsports. But you're out here, and uh, oddly, you're in second place. Your son's in second place at your home track. So what's the strategy as we go into this? Well, uh, needless to say, I'm sorry that Tony had that incident, but, uh, you know, we got to restart. And Chris has got a Chris and Batty got to get it on, and you know when the flag drops, you better get going. So uh, it's going to be it's going actually it's going to be pretty interesting to see how everybody responds to it. But I you know the weather's great, the track seems to be pretty quick, so it'll be up to Chris and Justin to kind of handle it and make sure that they behave themselves, but but compete, and that's what they're going to do. So 40 years of Dyson racing, and I know you've raced here many times, and it's great to see the hillside full of people. But what does that 40 years mean to you, especially having some of the same people under your tent? Well, I mean, it's gratifying. I mean, you know, racing is a wonderful uh, endeavor. I mean, it's got all the ingredients of, uh, of, of, of competition and uh, technology and logistics, but it comes right down to the people, and that's the greatest thing that's happened is that we've been dealing with people, uh, our, our human capital, if you put it that way, has been strong, and we maintain it that because that's what ultimately gets it done. It's not the hardware that does it. It's the people tuning the hardware. Now, when we were here uh, the first year that Chris won in TA, you were surprised to find out that we're doing the more classic course with the jump. How do you feel about that now? Well, it was interesting when we, uh, I, was, I was at the race, uh, unfortunately I wasn't on the track, but I was on the race when they realized that, they, that the prototypes were going so quick that they were lifting the wheels off. We had known that from uh, practice sessions before, but John Morton took it to a greater extent and put the car, put the Nissan right over a top of uh, Price Cobb, who was driving, Price and I were driving then. So the powers that be here at Lime Rock wisely figured out that we've got to do something about it. And they did, and they created the chicane, which has prevented that. But I will tell you that even at cars with these speeds, that you still get a little bit light on the steering when you're coming up on the hill. So if you get a little sideways, you, you can get into trouble. And I think that's probably what happened to Tommy. I think he, he got a little sideways and just at the right time. When a car came down, it just bounced a little bit and caused a little, caused them to move one side to the other. But, but, but uh, this is a great racetrack. Ironically, when we were running the prototypes, people don't realize this. When we were running the prototypes, there was only one track with a higher average speed. In the IMSA days, there was only one track faster, and that was a short course of Watkins Glen. People don't realize how fast this place is. It looks small and it looks tight and all that, but it it these, these guys are really running hard. Now, did you ever race here in the nine six two days? Oh, sure. That's uh, yeah, a lot of. I, I started with the Datsun and then moved up to the to the uh, GTO ranks and then got into the prototypes. Sure. Now, what kind of times were you doing in the nine six two back in the day? You know, I think then we were probably doing. I think about forty. 49s or 50s and uh, when the last time the prototypes ran here they were doing 40 42 eights 43s you know technology and uh, better design and uh, drivers putting the floor you know the aerodynamics changed and all of that so it's just like here I mean these guys are running if you put out an old classic Trans Am car that would be out and it'd smoke them and it's just the technology and the usual racer stuff you know, more power, more grip. Well, 40 years, Dyson racing here with Rob Dyson. Chris Dyson's out there currently undefeated in TA here at the Lime Rock Park for the Memorial Day Classic. Rob, thanks a lot. Great stuff, Ben. And as you saw uh, throughout the interview, we are still repairing that tire wall. A lot of work to be done, to be fair. Uh, but great to hear from Rob Dyson. And I could see you smiling there, Ken, because big memories. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, 
uh, Rob Dyson had the the team, the IMSA team, prototype team. James Weaver was driving. Um, Guy Smith as well with them. And it's funny, you know, Guy Smith uh, ran with us a couple of years ago at Watkins Glen and Road America. So it was cool to, to see these guys that you saw on TV and idolize them, and now you, you, we had a chance to race with them. As you can see, they are feverishly working to get this. If you've just joined us, um, we had a big accident. One of the TA cars, Tommy Dreese and the number eight Lucas Mustang, going off into the tire barriers. Not 100% sure why yet, but uh, either way, caused a big impact. He's okay, I'm glad to say, but made a nice mess of. Yeah, the- you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that they're having to push stuff back into place because, uh, you know, that barrier obviously gave and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, reduced the impact. If it was a cement wall, you know, it could have been a much worse shunt than, than what we're seeing here. It takes a little time to repair it, but, hey, safety is what's important here. And, you know, uh, the barrier did its job, and, you know, Tommy's okay. Well. So then, we, oh, there's Holy the shot that we've all Toledo. wanted to at least have a look at. Uh, that tells you everything you need to know. Uh, that was a massive, massive impact, and I'm glad to say Tommy Treacy has walked away from this accident. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun, motor racing, until it goes wrong. And when it goes wrong, it can have a massive impact. And you can see that is a rather junked up piece of metal there. Uh, but Tommy has walked away, hence the safety of modern day ma- racing. And we are all glad, Ken. I know you've been a few crashes in yourself. Uh, I've seen you. And uh, you must take your hat off to the, the current safety precautions that are, are taken both for man and machine. Yeah, you know, uh, I had a, a frontal impact at Mid-Ohio a couple of years ago, lost our brakes at the end of the straightaway and went sailing through China Beach there, head on into the barrier. And, you know, we got out, no problem. It was not, uh, it was a big deal to the car, but not to the driver. So, yeah, my my hat's off to the safety developments, the Hans device. You know, the Hans device has really saved a lot of people's lives at, and, you, you don't know how much it saved, you know, neck injuries, head injuries, spinal injuries. You know, it's just a, a great device, and we all wear it now. It's, it's without question you wear one every single time. Yeah, and we must take our hats off to the likes of Jackie Stewart and after him, Michael Schumacher. And, I mean, these are the names that perhaps, okay, they're in the limelight because they're in Formula One, but all of this trickles down, that hands device you mentioned. Uh, and people now, uh, like Alex Wirtz, who um, was responsible for helping design the uh, halo that we see in single-seater racing. But it all trickles down to any form of racing, the hands devices being the obvious one, but also the, uh, the torsion and, and the, the, the ability for uh, these tube cars also to have good crash impact. And you see it does look a mess, but the point is the driver inside walked away, and that's really how it's designed. Yeah, you know, that's a General Ozzy chassis. Um, you can see that it, it did its job. Yeah, we're looking at the damage of that Gentilosi prepared number eight Lucas car of Tommy Dreese. Tommy's okay, so let's just put that in perspective. If you're watching back in Hollywood, his family and friends, uh, the, the rockin' Moroccan is still rocking hard, but uh, we are under a red flag situation because of that. Uh, alongside me, Jonathan Green, is Ken Twaits, uh, just retired from racing, but is not any less busy. I was wondering how you were going to keep going. You've got about, what, five cars now? Yeah, I mean, well, uh, every race is different. We've got uh, two TA2 cars that we're running currently, uh, one for Michelle Abadi and her ghost-sponsored energy drink car, as well as Lucas Oil, uh, and MAV TV. You know what? We haven't talked about that. You know, Trans Am has uh, their own uh, Drive to Survive series called Road to Glory, and you should t- tune into MAV TV every Thursday night and watch That's it. right. So you can wait, basically watch the highlights on MAV TV of each weekend, and then we get to go behind the scenes with your team. In fact, they're currently filming as we speak. But um, great insight. I've watched it, and I enjoyed it, and I do like the perspective of, if you like, telling the story. And I like the order because... Y- you watch the race, and you know, oh, that was easy for, for, for the team. And then you go behind the scenes, you, and you get go, the real Whoa! story. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the whole goal is to be able to see, take, uh, 
you know, the viewer behind the curtain to see what actually happens yep. in the transporter. You know, the, the talks, the fights, the battles with other teams, that type of thing. I mean, we're all, we're all friends, but we're certainly bitter competitors out there as well. Um, and there's a lot of work that goes into these cars that make them go. And we kind of let everybody in on the secret and, and see how the magic happens. Great to have Justin Marks on board. And as you can see, they have cleared that situation right by the exit of Lime Rock. That's the bridge you go over on the way out. So that has been a very dramatic incident uh, indeed. And in a moment, we'll fire up the cars again and get going again because we've still got a race on our hands, folks. And, yeah, if you haven't had a chance to catch that series, Thursday nights, straight after the race weekend, on MAV TV, 8 o'clock, you can tune in, Eastern for TA2, 9 o'clock, TA race, followed by what Ken was just talking about, a nice behind-the-scenes look at what it's like to be <laughs> involved in a Trans Am race team. So, we are about to get underway, and the incident has been cleared very quickly, I may add, this patient fans have sat and waited, as we have, but we are about to go racing again, and it's Justin Marks leading the way, and let me just remind you, when we started today, Chris Dyson leading the championship by 15 points ahead of his teammate, Matthew Brabham, uh, Dyson on 285, um, and then Brabham actually only five points off the lead on 280, then a 26 point gap to Tommy Dreese in third and that's obviously with not a finish there allowing David Pintarek who's still very much involved in this race on 228 in fourth position so there'll be some change at the top after this one but this is the home race for Chris Dyson we just heard from Rob Dyson not used to his son in second place he's been a four-time winner here but it's far from over I would anticipate yeah. Ken that if uh, Chris is going to win this one he's going to have to do it early because Justin once he gets up to speed pretty unstoppable yep i bet the drivers are glad that these cars are moving now because sitting there in a hot car you got to turn off the battery and that means your cool suit is Ugh. not working and mike and Attaway, as you heard isn't is isn't right. getting his cool suit going right i thought that car had air conditioning too so <laughs> so they're glad it's starting now and get everything back up to temperature and we're going to have a wild shootout here in the finish Yep, and you, you got a, Mike got a, got a glimpse there of Paul Newman straight. If you know Lime Rock, you'll know that there was a straight called No Name Straight, but quite rightly, they put that to right because Paul Newman celebrating 37-year anniversary. And in fact, on display this weekend were two of his watches uh, and several of his rings uh, from winning in IndyCar with his team, Newman Haas. And obviously, Paul Newman, uh, a handy Trans Am driver in his day, very much so, loved his racing and was able to get away from the manning crowd of fans when he was racing and he was just one of the boys in, oh, yeah. when it came to racing. Yeah, great team owner, you know, Newman Haas, uh, IndyCar team with the Andretti's, um, great supporter of racing, much like, you know, um, Steve McQueen, uh, Paul Newman even more so. Um, so they went through the Mission Foods turn one. Turn one there is a pretty interesting corner. It looks simple, right? It's kind of banked on the inside, but after you, after you get half, off. it drops off. So if you go too high, you lose all your grip and you'll spin off. So Yeah, you often see people going wide and then and then literally just keep going. Yep. There's a lot of intricacies to this place, and you got to know them. This is going to be pretty interesting. Light's still on the pace car. Ooh, but they're they off now, off. so that we, we are ready to go racing again. Justin Marks will lead the field to green for track house racing. We're on board with Justin as he comes underneath the bridge. One corner to go, and then he'll be on the Sam Posey straight to get a restart. This is going to be crucial to the race. If Dyson and Brabham are going to challenge Marks, they're going to have to be on their mark right now and get a good start because Justin Marks is very quick indeed. And now he's taken the lead from having started further back in the field. He's got to make hay. Here we go then. A beautiful sound down the San Posey straight. Jostling for position. Not Protects close enough. The inside. Not quite close enough, but a good restart by both of them. Tires are cold. You know, it's going to take a little time to get that temp back up. Would that be... A chance then for Chris to have yeah. a go under the cold tire situation? Well, he's got the same issue, so, yeah. you know, they're going to slither around, you know, whoever's got the best car control. Yep. 
Well, Brabham and Dyson on the trail to try to catch them. The white and purple CD cars in pursuit of the black and blue of the track house number 99. All right, we're coming up on just 10 minutes to go. Yeah, and now it'll be a race against the clock because we basically, how we race in Trans Am is 100 miles or 70 minutes. And as you can see, that clock on the top left tells us we have just 10 minutes to go. What do you reckon, five laps? Well, probably about eight. They're 50-second laps, so... Wow, good battle here too, and of course... We forget sometimes when we're concentrating on the TA battle at the front that it's just as exciting and nail-biting for XGT, SGT, and GT in their battles. So we'll keep an eye and keep you honest on oh, those. There we go. But it's actually Bird who's got in front of uh, in XGT of Hale. Lowry's dropped to third, so the big change there. Oh, wow. Meanwhile, Saunders continues in the Dodge Viper to be uh, leading in ninth position ahead of Ricky Sanders. So there is the SGD car so big moment for these two as Pintaric and Ruman go head to head they are currently fourth and fifth and this is a battle for position and points yep. an important one too absolutely Amy's in shape she works out she's going to be all over him yeah it's been an up and down season by Amy Ruman uh, she needs some good luck. Hasn't had a great deal of it. And overtaking Pintaric today would be a good one and put her up to fourth position. And that's, I think, about all she can hope for because they are quite some way off the lead tr trio. But this is a great battle. Down uh, the hill they come. Yeah. She'll try and tuck in behind Pintaric on the main straight. Let's see if she can get a draft down the straightaway. Do you think she's close enough? I don't know. It's too too much gap in between. Yeah. Well, she's hanging right the, in there. Yeah, might bide her time. There's still plenty of time. There's still eight minutes to go. And like I said, this is the only scalp she's really looking for now in this race. So she's got time to do it. And it's just a case of making it clean and making it at the right time and not pushing too hard. It's well, easy to make a mistake. Yeah, again, it's, you know, how much tire does Dave Pinteric have left? How much does Amy have left? You know, it's getting towards the end. So let's see who's used up their stuff and who saved it. Here's Danny Lowry. He was leading in XGT, but as you can see, he's dropped down in that Mercedes. Wow. The leaders are catching him already. Yeah, that's how quickly, and they're going to be amongst traffic very soon indeed. So just what Justin Marks doesn't need is, is to have the last four minutes or so where he's having to dodge through traffic and hold off Dyson and Brabham. This could be a cracking finish. Oh, Ken. yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it is shaping up to be a good finish here. We got traffic to deal with. Dyson's in touch. There's only a 1.8 second lead for Justin. Well, Justin he's... Marks is due a good result, too, because it's been one-way traffic for CD Racing so far. They've won every race this week, this uh, season, starting off at Sebring. Then, obviously, at NOLA, and then on to Atlanta. Yep. Well, Justin, you know, he led that race at Sebring, and it's a brand-new car. Had electrical gremlins take him out. Um, at NOLA, we, he was on pole and uh, went off in the first lap. Had to come back. Threw yep. the race away. So, you know, let's hang on here. And then he had to miss a race. Yeah, he <laughs> missed a race there, so... So, six minutes to go, and it could be drama-filled, too. You can see from the drone just the gap that uh, Marx has got. It's about five car lengths, but that could change very quickly as soon as they get in traffic, which is coming up imminently. Mm -hmm. Brabham in a waiting pattern. And the pair of them will try to work together for CD Racing to catch yep. Justin Marks. There you can see a car in front of Marx. Yep. He's got a two-and-a-half-second lead here. We've got to get through traffic cleanly. Back to complete another lap. We're on board with Dyson in the gym weed on board. I mean, Brabham's got less than a second gap between him and the boss, Chris Dyson. He dispenses with Lowry nicely. Now, that's going to be a problem for the two Mustangs coming up next in the white and purple of CD Racing because they've now got to deal with Lowry. But Lowry's a smart fellow. 
And he'll know that they're coming now. He's seen marks. And they should catch him on the Newman straight and get past. And the speed differential, very quick indeed. Here they come. Exactly what I predicted, or yep. at least for Chris Dyson and Brabham, getting through before the hill. Nicely done. There's five, the 13. Five minutes to go. Yep. Michael Sire in the Porsche, the yellow and green there. He'll be aware that uh, they're about to pass him, and he does stay nicely on his line and not getting in the way of proceedings. But yeah. here they come. You can tell they've got the hurry up, the pair of yep. them. It's Helbert for Leather now. Five minutes to go. They got to Saia close. Marx has got a Porsche between them. But they, again, should use the Newman straight to their advantage by getting past him. Down the Paul Newman straight. And they want to get past before the hill, that's for sure. Coming up to where they Tommy Tracy went off. There he are. They and move they have over. Done just that. Yep, nicely done. See, we all work together, especially towards the end. Now, let's have a look. Chris Dyson, see the enemy, as it were. Well, just about, but he's quite some way down that San Posey straight. So if he's going to do it, it's going to be an almighty change because I can't see it happening. Justin Mark's just too fast at the moment. His last lap of 54. They clock clock right back in the closing stages. They were down in the uh, low 51s, but uh, the last laps of 54-1 from Amy Ruman and a 51-7 from Justin Mark. So they're still on a very quick pace at the moment. Yep. Chris has uh, just ran a 51-40, so same lap times. Yeah, it's going to need traffic, I think, though, for them to catch up with Marks. And I think on a day like today, it's uh, probably safe to come home second and third, pick up the points and extend the lead. I'm uh, not going to say anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. I don't want you to drink, jinx it. I, I don't, don't want to jinx I'm it. I'm not going to jinx anything right now. Well, it's been a cracking run so far. Three minutes, the clock ticking down. The Jim Weeds side by side together. The 16 and the 20. It's been that way all season long. But today... They may not get that winning streak continued. Dyson, though, never say never. He's actually no. got the opportunity. There's a couple of cars ahead of Mark. So there's still time. Yep, you can get tangled up with a back marker Easily. real easy. You know, they're tired, they're hot. Pick your, po pick your passing. Yeah, very carefully. As I said, patiently fast is the key to Lime Rock. Got to be both. About two laps to go, and they are picking them off one by There's one. Curry. Dyson gets through on Kerry hit. So too does Brabham. Now they can see him, and it is closer than it was before. The gap was four seconds. And you can see it visually. It's coming down. Yeah. Probably three laps to go here. Yep. Three laps to go and two minutes on the clock. 51, the average lap time. 51.7 last time out from Mark. Now, Chris Dyson will want to get past Saunders as soon as he can, and does so. He moves over for him. Good Nicely job. Done. Brabham follows him through. Looks like Justin's got some clear track ahead of him. Yeah, Rob Dyson was really cl clear about just how fast this Lime Rock circuit is, and he knows it. Probably raced most of his life around here, so if anybody's going to give you a lecture on how to race around here and what it's like, it is Rob Dyson, father of this man, Chris Dyson. Time running out though, 154. Yep. Blue flags waving to let him know that the faster cars are coming through. White flag not yet out. So we may just get one more lap after this. That might just give a little bit of an inkling of hope for the leaders. But Marks, so far, Justin Marks has put on a great display. This will be his first win of the season. Justin yeah. Marks committing to TA this year. He's been, he's dabbled, hasn't he? In and yeah, out. Yeah, he has. We knew that his schedule was going to be tricky this year. And when he showed up, this is his, this is when he has fun. So we want him to have fun. And there's nothing like having more fun when you're leading a race. No kidding. Well, he, White flag's out. The white flag is out. So the leaders get the white flag. Justin Mark starts his last lap. Uh, in pursuit of him are Dyson and Brabham. They've still got traffic to deal with. Meanwhile, Hale leads in XGT. 
Rumors dropped to eight. Saunders still leading in SGT. And Michael Sire, 11th overall, but leading in GT. Time running out. This is the final lap of TA here at Lime Rock. Memorial weekend. Always a celebration. But it may not be the celebration that the Dyson team wanted because Justin Marks has spoiled the party. But for track house racing, could it be a big day all along at Charlotte and here at Lime Rock for track house, we wonder. But it's going to be a memorable one because under the bridge comes Justin Marks. Had to start further back than he wanted to. But he's now going to finish it off in style and across the line and taking the checkered flag. Justin Marks wins here at Lime Rock and Ken Twaits is delighted. Good as job. Well he might be. <laughs> Good job for Showtime Motorsports. Yes, All well right. done. Good job that to Chris Dyson and Matthew Brabham as well. Amy Room and Dave Pinteric. Great drivers. Yep. Yeah, Ruman lost out there in the end because they were in a big fight, but Ruman dropped back in the closing stages there. And Pitarek will hold on to fourth place. Hale wins in XGT ahead of Bird and Larry. So quite a change around in that one. And then Saunders and Sanders. Saunders finishing eighth overall and winning in SGT, as he so often does, former champion. And here comes Pintarek in the memorial colors to take the checkered flag. But yes, let's not we forget, in the Showtime stable. That's right. It's Justin Marks. We came away with a win this weekend. It was a uh, little bit in doubt. We had problems uh, in practice. We had problems in qualifying. Got it all together for the race. Thank goodness. Yeah, and so really he didn't have the perfect sort of lead up to this by any means. Didn't get the laps he wanted to in qualifying. Had that brake problem. And so actually great, yeah, great yeah. hats off to all of you guys. Really yep. good stuff. It was great. Thank you. I mean, guys worked really hard. They had to change a motor. They had to change brakes. I mean, they worked their tail off this weekend, and we got it together. So that's pretty cool. Let's do a little there we go. burnout. Does he pay for his tires, or do you have to pay? <laughs> oh, no, he pays for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll give him some donuts. What the heck? You've got to put on a show, right? Don't wreck the car, Justin. So, Daniel Suarez, if you're watching, that's how you do it. The boss just showed you. <laughs> now, that's showtime right there. Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good job. I love it. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, my, my pleasure. And best of luck for the rest of the season for showtime. Uh, don't forget, give another plug to the, doc the doco because uh, it's great. Thursday nights, right? Thursday nights after you watch the highlight shows of the TA2 and TA races from Lime Rock. We'll be there as well. Uh, Franklin Road Apparel is the big sponsor. Check it out, franklinroad.com. And I am wearing a Franklin shirt as we speak, and I highly recommend you it. You look good, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Justin Marks, though, is the man of the moment, and he'll come and talk to our own Ben Sissel very soon. My thanks to Ken Twaits, who's going to go and celebrate with him, as he should. Uh, but, yes, we had to wait a while for that last sprint, <laughs> but it was worth it. And I'm glad to say that Tommy Dreesey is A-OK -okay after that big prank. Not so much the car itself, but uh, everybody walked away from that OK. But a big moment for Justin. He's been on the cusp of winning one of these races and finally gets it sorted. Okay. So off goes Ken to join the paddy, uh, the paddock and the podium celebrations. My thanks to Ken Twaits, of course, the owner of Showtime Racing. Several cars, five in total. And as you can see, parking them up there. And in a moment, Ben Sissel will get, first of all, the chance to talk to our winner. But then we'll head over to the podium where the crowd can enjoy it. So, some touch-and-go moments there in that one, and some big accidents, but some good racing as well, though. So, well done to all of our top three. Let's head down to Ben Sissel now and see if we can get a word with our winner. Well, welcome here, the Trans Am Memorial Day Classic here at Lime Rock Park. Justin Marks has just come in, the leader in the TA class. Just won the race. You can see he's talking on the radio here, talking to his team. About to get out and celebrate. Hold on a second. Hey, Sam, you guys can come in a little bit now that they're off. Come on in. But I need you to be loud. 
because we have some great fans here. Lincoln, right? How was the race out there? It's great. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Did the guy you wanted win? Yeah. Maybe. How about you? Um, not my guaranteed. My, my um, the one that I wanted to win was Lucas. Oh, one. Okay, yeah. He hit the wall, but Tommy is okay. He's gonna join us over here. Hey, get in here, Dickie. Get in here. So as our driver's getting out, Dickie, the president here at Lime Rock Park, that had to feel pretty good. Another good showing. Maybe your guy didn't come in first, but he's on the podium, right? Well, I got to tell you, this, this was an amazing race, and I'm going to give a lot of credit to the Lime Rock Park maintenance crew, our track crew, our safety crew, because we finished under green, and what an exciting race that was. Absolutely wonderful. I love it. Thank you, Dickie Regal. As you see, the team coming over here. Ken Twaits, that's got to feel pretty good. Oh, man, that feels good. We had a tough weekend. On, yeah! Woohoo! Yeah. Woohoo! Wait, Justin, Justin, hold on. You got to give it one for this one. Nice. Yeah! So, Ken, team owner, that's got to feel really good. Oh, man, we got a driver here, don't we? We battled all weekend. We had car problems, but, man, it ran like a top in the race. He had to come through the field, caught the leaders. These guys, they, they're no slouches either. They're great racers, and Dyson, yeah. So, Justin, there we go. Here we go. That's got to feel really good here on Monday. Your team's uh, racing right now, I think, and uh, you just won the race. Started from seventh, is that right? Yeah, these uh, these guys worked pretty hard this weekend, harder than they bargained for. I mean, we lost lost a motor after the first practice, and then uh, had a very different car for the second practice, and then blew the rotor out of the right front in the first lap of qualifying, so didn't get to really put a lap down for qualifying. So these guys deserve this win. They worked so hard fixing all that stuff the last couple of days. It was, uh, this car was just on rails. I mean, it was awesome. Those guys were a little bit better right off the bat in the short run, but I just made sure I never spun a tire anywhere and just made sure I kept tires underneath me and thing just came to life at the end. I worked traffic the right way to get by them and then uh, just put my head down and gave it hell for the last 10, 15 laps, whatever. And Lime Rock Park being the shortest circuit we race, uh, lap traffic had to be an issue. How was the lap traffic out there? It's tough. I mean, you have to really, what, what, what I, I mean, I used it to get by Chris and Matt because um, you really have to anticipate them like a corner or two ahead and so you know I'm judging their speed and I'm sort of thinking about when I'm going to catch them and whether I take a risk and or back out and wait and get the runoff and so you're always sort of thinking strategically like that and then at the same time you're having to race race guys in class so yeah it's tricky it's a narrow track it's a short track um, but when you have a car this good you can get it done. Anything you want to say to your NASCAR friends today? I don't. What time is it there? I don't know if they're if they're watching. They might be up in the lounge watching. But okay, yeah. So they're watching. So it's over to you guys. Your turn now. <laughs> nice, perfect. So we'll see what Suarez and Ross Chastain can do. Ken Twaits, that's got to feel good. Oh man, that feels so good. First win of the year for Justin. You know, first win of the year for Trackhouse. If you look at it that way. Come on, boys. Let's get it on. I love it. Let's come over here and try to talk to Nathan Bird. Where is Nathan? Oh, there he is. Here, we're going to come over here. I love having this crowd around here. All right, we'll explain that. You say you finished P2 on the track and scoring, but you think you should have finished P1. What happened out there? Yeah, because on the restart, I was I, I was told to drop back behind Danny so that we're all in the same lap. So he was P1, I was P2, Randy was P3. Um, I was I was able to get Danny on the restart. He actually just he actually just spun out spun out at the top of West Bend, just on the exit, lost the left rear. I was like, oh man, sucks for Danny, but he, I, luckily he wasn't in the wall, and. From there, it was just a matter of like driving defensively so I can keep Randy behind me because I knew he had more straight line speed and he had just as much brakes and corners as I, as I do, if not more. So I had to run a defensive line to turn one. We had a good run. I basically matched him under the brakes and we made a little bit of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. I think he got frustrated about the fact that that happened. And he couldn't outbreak me around the outside. And I ran a defensive line to go through turn two. And then that's where I feel like I just got like shoved and like punted in the back. And that ended up 
causing me to like full counter lock steer, clutch in, drive through the grass, join back. I still finished P2, but I'm, it seems like it's worthy of a penalty in my mind. But I don't know. The, the officials will have to decide that. Nice. Well, Nathan Bird, nice job in this TLM Porsche. Great start. Way to go. Well, Jonathan, I, I hear we've got some highlights to show. Good luck with those highlights up there. I'm going to send it back up to you. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Yeah, always some good highlights from a race like that. Plenty to look at. And interesting to hear some insights there from the guys involved in that interesting race. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, though, starting off with Brabham and Dyson going for it from the start. And Dreesy getting a good start early on. And at the start, it was the two CD racing, but a big moment there for the number 20 as... A mistake, if you will, for Brabham. And then from Justin Marks coming up the inside, a beautiful move by Justin Marks. And that's all it took for him to take the lead and therefore to go on and win this race. At the restart, Marks got another run at it, and so do did Dyson. And they had to side their way again through the traffic. And they tried to stay with each other. But in the end, there was no stopping Justin Marks, who takes the 99 track house car to a showtime win. Not a surprise then that uh, Justin Marks will also be the winner of our cool suit move because there was no question that Marks was the man on the fly. This is our highlights though of SGT, GT and XGT. Danny Lowry, a little bit of confusion at the end there, but Danny Lowry led XGT for much of the race. Good run also from Nathan Bird and Randy Hale. They kept them honest throughout dealing with the traffic and fighting with each other. Randy Hale in the number 31, going around the outside for a moment. But some good battles throughout most of this, and in the end, it was Randy Hale in the 31 who would win in XGT. SGT won by Lee Saunders and GT1 by Michael Sire. And in a moment, we'll go over to the podium. And don't forget, I mentioned it, but uh, the cool shirt move has to be Justin Marks, no question about it, because he was on it for our cool, uh, cool shirt system's cool move of the race. And this was the moment he got past. It was just a moment where Brabham made a mistake, and that's all it took. Marks pouncing into the Mission Foods turn one, and that is our cool move of the day. And another one here. He made a couple, didn't he? So great work from Justin Marks. He deserved that totally. When you see it on board like this, absolutely cracking. As you can see, they're throwing out the hats at the podium, and that's a tradition here at Lime Rock is that you come away from where you're sitting and come down and enjoy the Concerned festivities. Confirmation the of, of the TA Greasy. results. He hit Justin the wall. Marks Let's with the win for Track House and Showtime. Ahead of Chris Dyson in second place, Matthew Brabham in third for Jim Weed Cars, second and third, Pintaric in fourth, Hale uh, leads XGT and fifth overall, then Bird, then Lowry, Lee Saunders winning in SGT, ninth is Ricky Sanders, Michael Sire winning in GT and tenth overall. Further down, Amy Ruman in 11th, she lost power or something uh, later in the race, uh, Kerry Hitt in 12th, Michael Attaway 13th without that cool suit and Tommy Dreesey, as you saw, involved in that big incident. So it was a weekend that had everything and now time to head down to the podium pretty soon and join Ben Sissel. He's just rabble-rousing the crowd, getting them all going. He did a great job this morning. They love Having fun here at Lime Rock. It's been a fantastic weekend, certainly weather-wise. Uh, seeing Lime Rock in all its glory like this is absolutely lovely. And well done to Dickie and his team here at Lime Rock. Uh, Emily Reese and the rest of the team for making it run smoothly and accurately 
and keep us on time. I hope you've enjoyed it wherever you've tuned in to our live stream. And as you heard from Ken Twaits, don't forget, Math TV will be showing all the highlights this coming Thursday, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. Starting off with TA2. That's followed by TA. And then the Showtime documentary is straight after that. So the crowd filling in. Got a good, decent crowd there. We should get a, a few good cheers. Massive race weekend, of course, with the Indy 500, Monaco Grand Prix, Trans Am Memorial Classic, and many others. Charlotte to come. You heard uh, Justin Marks basically giving a, a shout-out to his team, Track House Racing, and he carries the Suarez colors or number of 99. Daniel Suarez, his driver, or well, one of his drivers. This has got to be, I think it's actually going to go down in history as the biggest crowd we've had here on a Lime Rock bank holiday or Memorial Day holiday weekend. So hats off to Lime Rock Park, who have managed to congregate the biggest crowd that we've had in many years here. So well done to a track that has been consistently running great racing since 1957. We, Trans Am, came here in 1967, and we've never looked back. We love coming here for sure. And in a moment, we will hear from Ben Sissel. He's just doing a, an interview with somebody from Lime Rock, and then we'll get down to handing out the prizes. Still more racing to come, though. If you're watching on our live feed, we've got more SBRA group races to come. So don't go away. We've also got FRP again, where I'll be joined by uh, Thomas Schrag. So let's head down now to Ben Sissel, who's got the crowd on their feet and ready to go for our podium celebrations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to hear how loud Lime Rock can get. Having some technical difficulties, but we're going to work through it. We're going to talk, start in the GT class. He had to come in early because his cool shirt, his cool system wasn't working. Let's hear it. Michael Attaway, ladies and gentlemen, in this Audi. And in first place in that beautiful Porsche. And first in Pro-Am. Let's hear it for Michael Saya. Where's Michael Saya? All right. So I guess to get on the podium, your first name needs to be Michael. There you go. I'm going to stay down here. He's first. Yeah, that's all right. So he says he's going to stay down here. He's first. He's second. Man, hot race out there without a cool shirt, huh? It was. Very hot. No one that's beside you and it won't come over for nothing. Full of ice. Just hot. Yeah. Very hot. Well, tell us about your race. Uh, first time up here, love the track. It's a lot of fun, real tight spots. Uh, I respect all those TA guys. Give them a signal, they go on through, let you race when you can. A uh, lot of fun. We'll be back. And it looked to me like you pulled it in in one piece. That's the best thing. You load it up the way you unload it. It's a very successful weekend. Nice. I love it. Yeah, if you can drive it into the trailer under its own power, you've kind of won the race in my mind. So, Michael, how was it out there for you? Well, it didn't rain, so which, which was a, always a plus, right? Uh, great race. Thanks to Trans Am. Thanks to my competitor, Michael. KMC for setting up the car. Does a great job, as always. Rabbit Raps did a cra crazy rap on that car. We love it. And uh, just thanks, everybody, for coming out. Really appreciate it. Nice. I love it. Well, here, let's get this party started, guys. We've got some of these Motul hats. Let's see what kind of arms these drivers have. What do you guys say, Lime Rock Park? Ooh, let's see, Michael Saya, oh, on the roof like a Frisbee. I love it. Now, hold on, hold on, don't move yet. We've got to do photos, so hold those trophies up. Here's our photographer right here. All right, hold those trophies up one more time with those new hats on. Let's hear it. Michael Attaway, Michael Saya, and also Michael Furston, Pro-Am. Nice job. Congratulations, gentlemen. 
crowd, I love this. Keep it up. But I want to I see how loud you can get. Hear how loud you can get, okay? I know you can get louder. I heard somebody getting loud. There you go. Uh-oh, let's see what we got here. Oh, look out. Oh, man. You guys can do better than that. I love it. All right, Michaels, you're off the hot seat. You've got some gift certificates to Summit Racing. All right, clap. Lime Rock Park Memorial Day Classic, SGT, Super GT, in second place, number 18. Let's hear it. Ricky Sanders. Come on, you can get louder than that. Gymnasts, come on now. And then in first place, I guess this podium, your name has to sound alike. First place in that beautiful Dodge Viper, back up on top, Lee Saunders, ladies and gentlemen. A big V10. Yeah, it was a pretty good race for us. We just just needed more motor. We couldn't keep up with that uh, big V10 with our little six cylinders. So uh, did all we could do. I had pretty good handling all day. I got to thank Danny Lowry again for still letting me use this car. And, uh, you know, of course, Bennett and Bridge Hall for supporting us. Nice. I love it. Let's hear Ricky Sanders and Lee Saunders. A little different from the last time we talked at the podium. You're back in your car. Yeah, it's uh, good, to be, uh, good to be back in the Viper. Uh, feel more comfortable there, but uh, obviously we appreciate getting the loan and uh, appreciate uh, Ricky, you know, running this clean. We unfortunately only had the two of us, but uh, hopefully at any there'll be a bunch more and uh, uh, anyway, just want to thank God for a great day here. Um, super exciting to see all the fans out on this wonderful day. And uh, really thank all our, uh, our veterans and everybody that's died to make this country uh, great and free. Never forget that, uh, the sacrifices they've made. Um, and just want to thank Trans Am for putting on a great race and, and uh, the TA guys for not hitting us. We were looking uh, backwards, maybe more than forwards sometimes today. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, of course, Kevin Smith, KSR, and, and Eddie. Uh, they did a heroic job to get our motor in uh, and get us up here. So thank you, everyone. Perfect. I love it. All right, hold those trophies up right here for the photographers. Ricky Sanders and Lee Saunders change out for those Pirelli hats. But Lime Rock, keep it up. One more time, Lime Rock. Come on, Ricky Sanders, Lee Saunders, Super GT. I love this crowd. The Trans Am Series presented by Pirelli absolutely loves coming here for the Memorial Day Classic at Lime Rock Park. Seriously, I'm not just saying this. Come to our other races. You'll see. You guys are the best fans here in motorsports, especially with the Trans Am Series. Wouldn't you agree, Lee Saunders? Best fans? Look at this. He's coming out. Give us some hats. There we go. XGT, Extreme GT. In third place, racing his Bennett Bridge Hall AMG Mercedes. Let's hear it, Danny Lowry. In second place, and this may be contested provisionally. In second place, the number 88, Nathan Bird, ladies and gentlemen. And then everybody get loud because this is his home track. This is kind of his hometown. Let's hear it. In first place, Extreme GT, Randy Hale. So, Danny, you started out kind of in the thick of it there, and uh, how was your race? I had a good race. Uh, uh, it was a lot of fun out there, uh, great fans. Uh, car was a little bit loose once we got tight, uh, uh, once it got hot in the middle of the turn. Uh, Sliding around a little bit on the restart. I let it get away from me, looped it back there at West Bend a little bit. But other than that, it was a great race and I uh, had a good time racing with Randy and Nathan and all the rest of the guys out here and love all these fans. And uh, God bless our troops and our uh, veterans. Nice. I love it. Here, we're going to have you stand up right here. So Nathan Bird, crazy race for you. You had, you had to probably look in your mirrors as much as you were looking out the windshield. How was it out there? Yeah, it was pretty crazy, and then my, my dad was doing a really great job just helping me be aware of my situation, and um, yeah, uh, making making progress through the field, and was able to move up to P2, 
and eventually on the restart, uh, Danny kind of took himself out a little bit, felt bad for him because he was, he was running a really, really good race, and I don't think we were catching back up to him if that hadn't happened. And um, yeah, just at the end there, just me and Randy had, had a bit of contact, and we're just going to have to see what the officials say um, about that. But yeah, so P2 for now, we'll see what happens. But I can't thank the fans enough. You guys are awesome. And I just thank God for this awesome Memorial Day and um, the, thank the troops that gave their last measure for us. Yes, I love it. I love it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I got to point out something. Look at these shoes. I want to make some dunks exactly like this. These, I want to call these the Memorial Day classics. Look at that. Unbelievable. Good for 4th of July. Good for 4th of July, too. Yeah, but Randy. This, you said this is your home track. Tell us a little bit about your race. Here, you grab it. It was a good race. I mean, Danny kind of took off, and I didn't even see the back of the Mercedes for a long time. And Nathan and I had a good battle. He got by me about 10, 15 laps in, and we just kind of tucked in behind him and ran our race. And then on the restart, it kind of got crazy, and we had an opportunity. We kind of tangled a little bit, and we'll let the officials who decides who keeps this one or we switch or not, or we don't know. But uh, so thank my family for being here, my daughter Skylar, Jamie, my fiance Diane out there, and uh, my son at home playing video games. <laughs> Hopefully long enough on YouTube watching the live feed, so he promised he would. So, but we really appreciate all the fans and all the police officers, we support them who making us safe all this Memorial Day weekend with the way on lights and the hail propeller and have a good a Dancing, That's not my girlfriend. My fiance's right there, so don't get me in trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's your fiance's name, Randy? Diane. Diane, wait, raise your hand. There she is. Everybody give it up for Diane. Nice. I love it. Lime Rock Park, lots of fun. Look at the photographers. Danny Lowry, third. Nathan Bird, second. Randy Hale, first place. Randy Hale sporting those shoes. I love those shoes, Randy, but hold on now. Oh, they want to do one just in case? I'm not sure. This might be a Trans Am first. A just-in-case photo. How about that for sportsmanship, ladies and gentlemen? I'm not going to redo the interview. Sorry, Nathan. All right, now get back into your positions. Never done that before. Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed a Trans Am first. How about the sportsmanship here in the Trans Am series presented by... Wait, wait, don't go. Don't go anywhere yet. But, but switch positions. Nathan, you're back at second. Randy... You guys could just flip a coin if you want to make it easier. Hold on now. Yeah. Well, we could do a we we could we could do a gymnastics pyramid if we wanted to, right? All right. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. Extreme GT. Danny Lowry, Nathan Bird, Randy Hale. Chris, I'm sorry. I got right in front. Um, you got to ask, you got to ask some of these guys. Uh, all right, Matt, here we go. When you come out, go out and throw it to the crowd. Hey, when you run out, run out and throw these out to the crowd. Okay? Hey, Justin, when you run out, run out and throw these out to the crowd. Who wants a hat? Check, 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 check. Check, check. All right, ladies and gentlemen, T.A. from just down the road, T.A. Masters. So happy to have him back in the series. This, the paddock has not felt the same without this man. From Advanced Composite, he provides a lot of the bodies for these cars. He helps out our drivers. Just from down the road, let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen, Kerry hit T.A. Masters. Harry, so happy to see you back in the paddock. It just hasn't been the same without you. I appreciate that. I'm so I'm so happy to be back. Uh, I miss the Trans Am family. Uh, love to come in Lime Rock. The fans are great. I've been coming just 50 years. I can't believe it's been that long since I've been coming here. But it's a great place to be. Uh, I love to be here. Uh, uh, today's very special day. It's a day to remember those that gave us the freedom that we can come out and enjoy what we're doing now. And, and uh, as you know, we've changed our numbers and we're running number 22 to pay tribute to the, the 22 that, uh, that 
Well, people come back with a PTSD and they're 22 people a day or 22 veterans a day that just uh, give up and the suicide rate, it just has to stop. We want them to know that they're remembered and uh, you know today's a good day to do it. So, But I love to be back. Thank you so much. Everybody here is so great. Nice. Thank you. I love it. Let's hear it. Carrie Hit. Chris, Chris, at the end of this, I'm going to do something kind of weird, so I'll tell you about it. But stick around, crowd, because we're going to do something kind of cool with the crowd. Let's hear it. Carry hit, Masters TA. But. All right, carry hit, Masters. Now, Lime Rock Park. Let's see if you guys have been paying attention the last couple years. We need to warm up the crowd a little bit before this next section, okay? So, I say lime, you say rock. Lime, lime. I say trans, you say am, trans. Trans! Nice, all right, you guys are ready. Trans Am drivers, are you ready? In third place, ladies and gentlemen, the number 20, let's hear it, Matthew Brabham. Who wants a hat? Run up there, Matthew. Come on, throw up some hats to some people. You gotta get loud for a hat, look at that. He's got an arm. Oh yeah, he's got an arm. Ooh, a deflection, I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a change. He's done so well here in the past. He calls Lime Rock Park his home track. In second place, hard fought battle, the number 16. Let's hear it. Chris Dyson from Poughkeepsie, New York. Listen to that. Chris, they want some hats up there. Who wants a hat, ladies and gentlemen? Those cool 80s Motul hats. Oh, nice. Oh, they're fighting for it. I love it. Dyson, welcome back to the podium here at Lime Rock Park. And according to my watch, his other race started two minutes ago in Charlotte from track house, started seventh, worked his way up to first in that beautiful number 99 Camaro. Let's hear it. In first place, Justin Marks, ladies and gentlemen. See what kind of arm Justin Marks has. Ooh, ooh pretty good. I think Daniel, Su Daniel Suarez could throw a little better than that, though. We'll see. Oh, look at that. That was boomerang. I like that. That was fancy. That was fancy. Nice job. Matt Brabham, back up on the podium here with us in the Trans Am Series. How does it feel? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, it's such a great crowd, great atmosphere. It's such an awesome weekend. And obviously, uh, big thanks to, to our sponsors, Jim Weed and, and Chris Dyson and the team. It's uh, a lot of history for the team and obviously myself and, and my family. So it's uh, just so special to be here. Big thanks to all you guys. Really appreciate it. And obviously, congrats to Justin. He drove an awesome race. Nice. I love it. Matthew Brabham. Chris Dyson, always amazing here at Lime Rock Park, celebrating 40 years of Dyson racing at your home track. Look at this. This has got to feel really good. It'd be a lot better if I was standing in Justin's place. I got to tell you, we, uh, we gave it everything we had out there. We just didn't have the car, uh, but I'm real happy to, with the team's performance as far as giving me a car that I could get home. Great for the points. Uh, sorry we, the streak had to end today, but we'll come back next year and try to get back on the good. Uh, so proud of the guys. Great to see you. We've got a lot of friends and family here to support our Jim Weed cars. And uh, I see my family here. Dad's here 40 years, 40 years. And I want to give him a round of applause for all the support for the sport. Love you, Dad. And my mom's here too, somewhere. And I just want to say thanks, guys, for giving us the opportunity to be here every year. This is wonderful. Nice. I love it. And hey, Chris, it's, it's so weird, but, you know, you're, you're upset to be in second place. That, that just shouldn't be the case. But, man, the car to beat today, starting in seventh, he broke a rotor in qualifying, made it all the way up to first place, track house racing, Justin Marks. This has to feel good. Okay. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, we, we've been on pole the first two races this year and haven't. Hello. Hello. Hold on. We'll be right back. Check, 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 check. There we go. All right. Yeah. So it's been a good start to the year. We you know put the car on pole um, a couple of times that haven't been able to trans translate either of those into wins. So um, it's good to get the win today. These guys right here sitting they had to work a lot harder than they signed up for this weekend, having to replace a motor after first practice and then a rotor after uh, after qualifying. So uh, it's nice to reward those guys with a win. And um, it was tricky. I mean, you know, both these guys' cars were fast. I had to really use 
lap traffic to try to to try to get by him because I think in a straight up dogfight it would have been would have been pretty tricky. But just proud of my team and all these guys and uh, glad to be here at Lime Rock. All right, let's hear it for him. And and guys, don't go too far. We're gonna do something kind of special. But let's hear it for him. Matthew, Brabham, Chris, Dyson, Justin, Marks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is shaping up to be quite a great TA championship. This might be the three battling it out right here. Oh, oh, look at that. Dyson throws to the competing team. Look at that. Oh, and then Jeremy throws it back to the crowd. Very good. All right, Lime Rock, one of your last chances. Let's get loud. You've got one of your own up here. Matt Brabham, Chris Dyson, Justin Marks. I like this area right here. Somebody's loud right in there. I love it. All right, and don't go too far, gentlemen. We've got some cool things happening here. Let's see what they do. Chris Dyson has his own champagne tradition. Let's hear it. Matthew Brabham, Chris Dyson, Justin Marks. Look at Dyson. Going to hold it up. It's gonna, are you going to do one for the homies, Dyson? There we go. One for the homies. Memorial Day weekend for the Memorial Day Classic. I love it. All right, but hey, don't go too far, so we're gonna do something kind of crazy. But our cool shirt, cool move of the race goes to Justin Marks. So let's bring out that big happy Gilmore check. Let's hear it. Justin Marks, the cool shirt, cool move of the race. And then Larry Grant is gonna come out here. Grant from Emco Gears, our Emco Top Gear Award. Grant, you got to get up there with them, though, up there on the top. Emco Top Gear Award also goes to Justin Marks, ladies and gentlemen. How cool is that? All right, crowd. Who over there said they wanted chips? We're going to throw out some chips. Drivers, if you'll come over here with me. Uh, Chris, if you'll stand here. And then drivers, we're gonna do a family photo. Justin, Justin Marks, come up here real quick. So drivers, stand right here. Crowd, I need you gathered up right behind them. Come on, you guys want in this photo. We're gonna share this photo on social media all over the place. So drivers, right here in order. Wait, Chris, you'd be on this side. Matt, you'd be on this side. There we go. Chris, how's that? And we'll leave the podium situation with Ben. He's in full flow, but so too is this FRP 1600 feature race two. Excuse me, race three. We've already had two, but Porter Aitken once again at the sharp end, but we've got a three-way battle. I'm joined once again by Thomas Schrag. Uh, enjoying this one, his man Jack Sullivan having to side this way through the field, having started 22nd, but we've got a cracking battle at the front here, haven't we? Yeah, for sure. I think the three-car breakaway, we expect to see that. And you see those six or seven cars mid-pack. We've seen that each race this weekend where they, they've they kind of separated themselves at the front, and then there's a big field in the mid-pack. So Porter Aitken goes back to the front in the 99th. Etten Hook in the 02 right there with him. And then Sebastian Mateo uh, Naranjo in third position there. And then this gap to look at this battle. Four cars six cars in total and i'm gonna keep an eye on where hopefully jack sullivan he's up to 17 having started further down but he was one of the fastest men out there but still what happened earlier today well his uh his battery was ran a little low about seven volts uh due to an alternator issue so ah. um got that fixed replaced new battery and he starts about 20 second in this race as you've seen he's up to 15th now good for him so we'll keep an eye on i'll put you on jack watch <laughs> thomas helping out jack sullivan this weekend as a sort of driver mentor and coach doing a good job but at the front porter aiken leading the way yet again meanwhile this battle is getting nice too joe colasacco uh, ahead of robert perona and robert albany and then Dexter Kazuba just behind him in seven. Down the San Posey straight they come. Four laps gone. You joined us late, but you didn't miss any of the action. Obviously, we're doing the podium. We've got to do our podium celebrations. Well done to Justin Marks. And a 
combination of different cars from Miguel's to Van Diemen's. The odd Piper in there uh, and a Citation. That's a rare one. And a Spectrum as well. So there you go. Lots of different chassis, but all racing pretty hard. But you can see how close it is at the front. Nothing between them. Etten Hope really putting the hurt down on Aiken, who's still at the front, just trying to force him into a mistake. Hoop going very wide there, and he's so close. Good racing this, Thomas. Yeah, I think the top two, you see them breaking away right now. They have to work together at this stage in the race. Third's going to drop back to that uh, fourth, fifth, sixth pack with Colasaco leading it. Yep. And I think it's all maybe going to turn into one big group here soon. You do? Yeah, it's only a matter of time. It depends, it depends if there's any safety or any problems. But uh, right now, so far, so good. We had actually a couple of incidents at the start. I don't know if you noticed who went off. There was one uh, yellow car went off right at turn one at Mission Foods turn one. And then there was another one that went off at turn three. Um, yes. Not quite sure who it was, but uh, either way, we've had some action already. Now, I see a yellow flag in the hand of that marshal, but I don't think he's waving it. So that's good news. Ah, <laughs> I say that, and he is. So the caution is out. Now, we had quite a few cautions in the previous race. Um, that's got to be off-putting as a driver. You, you know, you're getting into your rhythm and then suddenly, ugh, you got to slow down again, right? Well, if you start in the front and ah. you're one of the top two guys, you kind of hate to see that yeah, your gap is gone. But at the same time, if, you know, you're starting back like Eli Navarro and yep. the, uh, well, now is zero three 3 car, and Jack Sullivan, they do not want to see this. This is a loss of laps for them in this race, but it does also bring them closer to the field yeah. at the same time. So, Well, Nova, Nova, I mean, Sullivan now must be ways. thinking, yeah, yeah, he's 13th at the moment, and I, he must be thinking, well, I could, I could do something to him here at the restart. And now he's got his alternator and battery sorted. Was he down, was he crestfallen after, after that incident, or was he okay? He was okay. Uh, he actually looked at it a lot better than most people will. Uh, he saw all the incidents that happened and thought that could have been him. Yeah, That's, good point. He's been around those guys all weekend, so that could have been him and involved in those accidents as well. Yeah, there were several accidents. Uh, if you weren't with us earlier, we had a car right at the end tip over, um, and then I saw a couple of the, the drivers coming up to see the stewards and have a chat with them. So there was quite a lot of controversy in terms of the actual racing, um, and we're under caution again. Uh, the field being led by Porter Aitken in the 99, followed by Ayrton Hook in the 02. Hauk? Is it Hauk? Or? It's Hauk. Hauk. Now, you know him. You've raced against him, right? Yeah, I've actually raced against Ayrton since probably all the way back in karts. So we, we go a long way, um, not just on road racing as well as oval racing. I've raced against him as well. Um, in the Kenya Midget Series last year. He was the 2021 champion of that series. And so I raced him in that. He was a little more experienced than I am, so uh, it took me time to get up to speed there. Well, you're listening to last year's FRP 1600 champion, Thomas Schrag, and looking to move forward, maybe get to the road to Indy, and hopefully one day emulate his hero, Joseph Newgarten, who took a win in a local Indiana race yesterday with a few people there to watch it. Some 300,000 people to see the greatest spectacle in racing, of course, the Indy 500. We're under caution here in our 1600 race. This is their third race, uh, their feature race of three each weekend. So you do get a lot of track time. That's the good thing, isn't it? Well, that is the main uh, priority in this level that we're in so um you know robert wright and frp they do a great job of you know getting exposure especially this year uh, as you see on this live stream um they a lot of exposure that's what these drivers need i wish i had it last year i'm a little bit jealous but <laughs> um it's all right. I'm happy to be on here and join you again. I've had a blast, so Good. it's amazing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different perspective, but it's as close to the racing as we can get you without throwing you in the car again. So we've still got the lights on on the safety car, so whatever the incident is, it's taking some time to sort. 
Um, but as always, it's been run very well this weekend. And this restart will prove very important because we'll be running out of laps fairly soon. And we've got more group racing from SVRA to come. A couple more races to bring you. And don't forget, uh, double header for TA2 next weekend as Trans Am head to Detroit as part of IndyCar. Uh, the IndyCar race continues, or the series continues at Detroit, and we will be part of it in TA2. We'll race one on, on Saturday, once on Sunday, uh, and therefore over 200 points up for grabs as well. So an important couple of weeks this for Trans Am. Is there a preference for, for chassis? I mean, every, every car just looks slightly different, but do you have a preference or do you care? Personally, as long as it's fast, I don't really <laughs> care. Yeah. Uh, some people, they they might care, but um, as you've seen, uh, Team Pelfrey, mm -hmm. Rice Race, uh, Britain West, they all run my gales, and um, you will see some people that run Spectrums as well. Very fast straight line cars. Okay. Um, believe it or not, even over in England, they're very popular. So um, I've had to race against them as well. And, you know, it, I, I know that I can't beat them in a straight line, but they might also not handle as well at the same time. Okay. So under caution, obviously, you're trying to keep the temperature in the tires. You were saying to me earlier in the day, not so worried about brakes. They tend to stay warm or at least usable. Um, whereas with the bigger Trans Am, with the bigger brake calipers, they have to keep pressing that brake just to keep the temperature in the brakes and make sure that they're working optimally. And you know, I start to see that curvature at the three-dimensional service's left-hander. And uh, it's a much bigger corner than it looks until you get real close to it, like the uh, drone is doing just that. Thank you, sir. I bet it gets hot very quick when you go and slow, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. And some of these cars have trouble cooling as well. Okay. Especially on a hot day like this. Uh, well, you'll be, you might see some people pulling out of the draft. There's been several times if you get a day where it's about, you know, 90 degrees or so, and you're in that 10th place spot, you're kind of, you know, in a bad situation because – what happens is you kind of lose power at the same time when you overheat. So you kind of have to balance pulling out versus, you know, your uh, temperature as well. Here we go then. Porter Aitken leads them to the start, but it's jostling for position again. As once again, Ed Hoyt just gets the run on him. And that who gets away and takes the lead away from Aitken. So he loses out on the restart as Porter. And that's a great restart from Enton and a leading this field, but everybody lining up behind. And in fact, Porter Aitken has dropped now to third position at that restart. Naranjo in the 80, down to fourth. Perona fifth. Colasacco up to third. So a great restart by him. So it's all changed at the front on that restart. There's the chill out sponsor, number 99. I don't think he did anything particularly wrong, did Porter? He just didn't get off the line as quickly as he wanted, right? Well, I'm not really sure, but as you see right now, Joe Colasacco, yeah. uh, he is he has a lot of laps at this track, and he's very experienced, and he actually just took the lead, so I'm really surprised. Uh, even uh, Bob Perona, he actually won a race at Road Atlanta this year as a Masters driver, so Joe might be able to do it again. Well, Joe Colasacco, yeah, uh, in that Van Diemen from 2004, leading the entire field now. There he is in the red with the green nose. We'll keep an eye on Sullivan, currently in 13th, but trying to make his way through the field from 22nd. Cool, they are line astern, aren't they? 76, Perona. Down the hill they come, through the... Bridge Hall downhill. The Bennett Bridge Hall downhill at turn seven. 
the wheel on the grass. And look at this, three wide here for the lead. Port Aiken on the inside. And Aiken takes the lead again. But for how long, I wonder? Excellent racing between them and Aiken bouncing back in style down the straight and into the lead he goes. And the leader, Colasaco, goes from first to third in a matter of seconds. Now, can Aiken pull away? That's the problem. It's so hard to pull away when everybody's identical, isn't it? It definitely is. Uh, I thought Porter was able to do it Saturday, but then he, uh, he bobbled a little bit, and just that little bobble through one turn brought him back together. I'll tell you what, if, you're, if you don't like racing close quarters, this is not for you, is it? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Down the bat, Sam Posey straight again. Again, three wide. And Enhook gets the lead again for now. Porter Aitken back to second. Colasaco still third. And the three of them just slightly pulling away now. Sullivan up to 11th now. So he's making his way bit by bit. He's not in this group. He's just behind it. No, there he is. In the 19 with the red uh, and grey. So our first glimpse of him. And so it's Kazuba in sixth, Albany in seventh, Defense, Shipman, Navarro, then Sullivan. About to complete another lap. Now, can Kalasako come back again? He's gone to the inside. That's been the winning formula so far. Can't quite do it. No change at the front. Well, there's action everywhere you go here. We need about eight more cameras to cover every battle. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the drone because you get to see the little pockets of racing throughout. So we've got a battle for the top three, then a battle for fourth and fifth. And then a huge battle behind that. And there's a good example of how to get through that last corner here. And use that straight again to try to get the slipstream, try to pull out, try to get in position. And oh, very late breaking. All right, Ayrton Hope. But stay second for now. They put on a show, that's for sure, this weekend. Thomas, how does the car feel at this point in the race? Is it getting easier or harder to drive? It's definitely getting harder, uh, especially this track being so abrasive. Yeah. Most drivers, uh, you're allowed six tires per weekend, but still, it kind of tears the tires up, and especially on a hot day like this, it'll get yeah. greasy. Yeah. So does the car get loose? Yeah, it could be really loose, depending on the liking of the car. Basically, if if you've got a car that's loose, it's going to tend to get looser. And if you've got a tight car, it might tend to get tighter. Good to know. The top three pulling away from this massive battle. Wow. I thought if they all worked together, they might catch up with the lead battle, but they're fighting hard with all of each other. So they're just going to slow each other down, but it's an intriguing battle all the same with about 10 cars involved. And it's Sullivan now up to ninth. So Jack Sullivan doing the business. Colasaco losing time on the leaders. What did you tell Jack before he headed out? Well, I actually showed him one of my old videos. Uh, like I said when I was talking to you a little bit ago. Uh, last year, I had to come from about 18th, and I had won a race in South Carolina. So um, it, it's a little bit different of a mentality. You're just always aggressive, and if you try to make a move and you can't make it stick, it actually hurts you even more. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, lock up there on the inside somehow. Just gets it back together. That's Kazuba, I think, what, that uh, locked up there in the all-yellow 88. 
So everybody frantically trying to get that position, but that is the overtake. Or well, the best place to overtake up the inside at turn one. But you've got to pull it off. You can't lock up like that. You just slow yourself right down. Now, how fast can Sullivan go? He's got uh, the 41 of Albany in front of him. And this is a good run so far. Well, he's, he's obviously learned from your video. He's done a good job. He just needs to maintain this and maybe see if he can crack off a, a few more places and then that'll be a good day at the office or a good comeback, put it that way. Oh, three wide into Mission Foods one. I count 11 cars in that battle, but there's your three-way battle at the front and it's still locked in battle, isn't it? They've pulled away well, but uh, who's your money on for the win here? Uh, well, I think I'm going to take the experienced guy, and I'm going to go with Ayrton Houck in the O2. Um, maybe even Joe Colasacco, as I said, he has a lot of laps here, but it, I'm wondering if his pace can keep up with the other two. Well, Houck's certainly looking very racy at the moment. He's looked good all weekend long. Here they come again. Out on the inside in the light blue. Porter Aitken on the outside, it, slotting into second place again. Colasarco still there in third. And there you see the gap between those top three and the chasing group of some ten cars, all line astern. And not giving an inch either. Yeah, Hout looks very confident for me. Happy to lead. We were saying in the last race that uh, you're not so sure whether you want to be the leader or not. You want to wait uh, and maybe Aitken in second place is in a better place to go for the win. So down the San Posey straight again. Aitken getting a run. He goes to the outside, and it's doubtful he'll get round the outside there, so they all stay line astern in the same position. Meanwhile, that chasing group coming in, and now the lock-up by the 88. He did exactly the same as last lap. And again, he doesn't outbreak himself completely, but uh, he's risking it all, that's for sure. little bit of a break. I think Misha Goikberg not taking part in this one. He's had a busy weekend as that man. There's Sullivan. Now, where is he now? He's in ninth position. So, Jack Sullivan, where, do you, where, where were you predicting he'd pop out? Well, uh, obviously you always you want to win from that position doesn't happen very often and it's it's very hard here um i think he might maybe get a couple spots to sixth or seventh but that i don't see him getting much further on this lap well thomas i'm going to get put the pressure on you here porter aitken is leading and this is the final lap but who's going to take the win here as you said i think second might be the best place to be right now and uh i still say the o2 of Ayrton how most likely could have a run at the line, and we'll see. I, it might be close. Here we go then. Porter Aitken in the 99 leads on this final lap, but here comes Hulk. Hulk looking for a way past, comes to the inside. This is going to be the decider. Aitken, Porter Aitken closes the door. He's got the advantage, but it still could be a photo finish here as they come towards the line, and it's close. Porter Aitken wins. Just. Colasaco takes second. And ha has to settle for third. Wow, that was a big change. And Colasaco will be happy with that. Oh, intriguing finish. And Sullivan, eight. You've got to be pleased with that. Solid finish, yep. Nicely done. So, some great racing. And remember some of these names that you're listening to, including Thomas track next to me because you're going to be hearing these names in the future.
And I've now done two events where I've watched Porter Aitken come across the line and take the checkered flag. And so watch out for the 99 this year too. He's putting on some good performances and keeping his head, more importantly. Racing safely, racing hard, and racing fairly. That's what it's all about. So, confirmation of the results of race three. Porter Aitken wins ahead of Joe Colasaka, who just got to the line ahead of Ed and Howe. At the end there, in third, Navarro in fourth place. Mateo Naranjo in fifth, then Perona, Kazuba, Sullivan, Shipman, and Albany. That's your top ten here at Lime Rock. My thanks once again to Thomas. Uh, best of luck for the season. Thank you very much. Um, and we hope to be seeing you hopefully on the road to Indy very soon. I hope so. All right, we'll take a short break here from Lime Rock. More action from SVRA and the Speed Tour coming up. Yes. Fun. the WeatherTech's here. WeatherTech is the ultimate protection for your vehicle. Laser measured floor liners, no drill mud flaps, cargo liner, bump step, seat protector, and cup phone. What about my car? WeatherTech. Hungry for SVRA action? Well, the best way to enjoy classic auto racing is with a delicious classic from Mission Foods. Green flag your race watching snacks with Mission's mouth watering race day recipes. Try some of our tasty tacos, piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. So gear up your ride and fuel up those stomachs with delicious Mission Foods. Now that's too fast, too tasty. Welcome back to Lime Rock Park. It's the Memorial Day Classic, live from Lime Rock here in Connecticut. A classic circuit for a classic day. And my thanks to Thomas Schrag, who's been with us for this last race. As we move on to our next coverage for SVRA. Got some more group races to come. And as you can see, they're already pre-gridded. Now, we've seen these guys in action already this weekend. And this is our Group C. 